Hey, welcome. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, everyone. My name is Eric. And I'm Mike. No, you're Michiel. Yeah, but that's a difficult name. OK, for most <laughs> is a difficult name. This is the English version. <laughs> yeah, so I'm here against my will. I have to say that because last week Mike uh, played a trick on me. Oh, there is something with your microphone, apparently. No, let me see. Did you break it already? Already. <laughs> So you're not breaking any hardware today, but uh, the maybe oh, I have number hardware. one over there. Can you check on the panel? Yeah, looks okay. I'm just talking, just not making any sounds. People Is it like crackling, or what kind of issue does he have? The mic audio is weird. Mm. Okay, so this works. High pitched, boom, boom, boom. robotic. Okay. <laughs> robotic. Maybe a reboot your. Uh... Reboot. Yeah, just switch it off. And I'm always on. talking like this. <laughs> <laughs> but welcome, welcome, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about Project Zero. So if you've seen our uh, Computex live stream or maybe some, some of the news that I'm was back. published this online. Better? Distortion, OK. Let us know if, if this is any better. Um, there we already gave Much you a sneak better. peek okay, of, cool. of uh, Project Zero. And basically uh, what it is is that the connectors on the motherboard that you will usually find on the front, so for example power connectors, but also all the headers that you have for fans, RGB, uh, audio headers, etc. They're all positioned on the back of the motherboard with Project, Project Zero. Uh, so in our Compitex live stream, we quickly showed you uh, the engineering samples that we have here today as well. Um, but today we're actually going to do a, or well, we, Eric, is going to do a build with it. <laughs> yeah, happy me. <laughs> by, uh, by the vote last week in the live stream, um, yeah. yeah, chat decides, so you have yeah. to do it, Eric. I think uh, we will also go into a lot of the details, uh, problems, uh, challenges, well, maybe that's the same. Problems uh, you will usually cause, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I'm talking about the, the project series, you know, the, 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 the build on the back. and uh, There yeah, are some challenges, like yeah. compared to... to we will also, cases, we so. would like to have your opinion. Uh, we're going to put this on the market uh, later this year, yeah. later more details about it. We Not this specific model, but no. the, like the concept. Yeah. yeah, indeed, indeed. So, um, we also have a giveaway, Mike. Yes, right on top of you, you can see the... The URL, so go to msr.com slash two slash insider, or if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, you can also follow the direct link that our bot will put uh, in the chat once every five minutes. And that will lead you to Gleam. And in Gleam, you can participate um, in the giveaway where we will give away several Steam wallet codes. So make sure to join. Um, Eric, let's maybe uh, have a look at uh, what we had at Computex. Oh, yeah. So it has to be at least this pretty, Eric, your build. <laughs> oh, my God. No, <laughs> now, as you can see, it's, yeah, it's a different case. So we have a, like, this looks more like the, the actual model that we will bring to the market later this year. It will not be 100% identical, but this is more the, the look and feel you can expect from the actual so product. So to be clear, this case will, uh, is just for demo, right? We yeah, this is just like market. a very early engineering sample. Yeah. And this is already more like the actual product as you will find on the market later on. So not identical, but it will look more like this. Yeah. So uh, today we're going to talk more about the concept, about the, exactly. the challenges which this have, uh, has uh, also to bring it to the market. Um, and I will do a build with it. So yes. um, it's not only mechanical, uh, the challenges, but there's a lot of compatibility is an issue, of course. It's also just picking up the motherboard is already a bit different than what you're used yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe we can, um, I mean, well, let's maybe talk first about uh, the, 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 the models we have over there. Yeah, so um, what you see here is, is a new case. It still has to be named. That's still unknown. Um, but it so is a micro. So please give us your suggestions in the chat. Yeah, if you, you see anything Fish you like tank. or dislike, let us know, because this is still in development, of course. Aquarium. Um, it looks a bit like an aquarium, yeah. It's a micro ATX case. Um, so is the one that we're actually using today. It's also yeah. a micro ATX case. Um, the motherboard you see right next to it is the B650M <laughs> Project Zero motherboard. Um, and on the very left, you also see the, the rear of the motherboard. So there you can already see that the connectors are on the back of the PCB. Um, except for the, the B650, so that's obviously AMD, uh, AM5 based. Uh, we will also come with an Intel version based on the B760 chipset. So in the end, you, uh, you get to choose um, whether you want AMD or Intel. Uh, today we're building with the AMD version, so this is the B650M Project Zero. 
This is not the final board. No, this um, is still everything we're using today in terms of Project Zero is, the, is engineering samples. Yeah. So both the case and uh, the motherboard. Yeah. I, can, I can already show you directly some uh, uh, challenges. For example, here on the back of the board, you see that pin, uh, maybe, maybe like this. One of them is not straight anymore. And that's because there you picked it up? <laughs> no, I mean, this is uh, one of the challenges what I see. I mean, normally, if you have a retail box, you put the board in like this. And now, basically, it's standing on the pins. So uh, it's very easy to damage them. And I think we, uh, the industry, needs to find solutions in order to prevent that. So maybe we're going to pack main bus like this. Um, or there should be some, some stands off. Uh, uh, how do you say that, Mike? Yeah, like standoffs like you have in a case, yeah. for example. So you basically elevate it a little bit. Yeah, indeed. That, that those those uh, pins, which are quite fragile, you know, the, the pin headers uh, for audio, uh, USB, etc. Those are actually not the worst one. The USB 3.1, that's the, uh, the, the front USB 3.0, the internal pin header, that's a <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> but that one out. is already supported by like the outside header, but some pins are really exposed. Like maybe the, you can show the RGB connectors up close, because those are really like fully exposed pins. Yeah. So this is no problem. Uh, the SATA connectors, uh, you can just uh, put this on the, on the desk over here. Uh, these as well. Uh, 24 pin is no problem. Actually, the, the problem here is this one is higher. So even if you put it uh, on, the, on the desk, these two, the power connectors uh, for the CPU and the 24 uh, pins, they are the highest on the board. So all the pin headers are below that. But um, in this corner, it should not be a problem. But this corner, it will rest on the pins. So that's one of the challenges which uh, will uh, come with this board. Uh, a second one I already by accident showed you last time. Chad already has a solution, Eric. Okay. Snip says you could put the headers on the front. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great suggestion. <laughs> so another problem is we tend to hold the mainboard like this. It's, uh, I mean, it's natural uh, to pick, the, pick up the product like this. However, as you can see, there are a lot of pin headers over here, so it's very easy to grab them. And then the board is quite heavy in this case because of the heat sinks. They will bite the pins. So, so you may not only damage the pins, but also your hands. <laughs> uh, yeah, indeed. So actually, the only place where you can hold it is on the uh, rear I.O. Uh, over here. Because there are, as you can see, there are no pins on that side. That's logical because normally on the main board there are also no pins on the front side, which need to be connected. And over here on the other side where the uh, SATA connector is, because all these uh, have an, um, a case around them, like the SATA connectors, like 24 pins, uh, the USB connector, and the other USB connector. So, so they're not as painful. Yeah, not as painful as on the top. Or at the bottom, especially the bottom, where all the pin headers are for USB, etc. That's quite painful. So, yeah, uh, we need to think about that. How we're going to? You actually, I'm not sure. Well, you know, the the the, the desk is. You already see it. You see. It's Maybe move it to the back a little bit. Yeah, it's very difficult to see. But uh, if you can see this, it's it's uh, tilted like this. So it needs to up here uh, to go up here by like a memory dim, <laughs> <laughs> something like this to to make it uh, uh, straight. I mean, it's no problem. Just now it rests on the pin headers, and if you push on it or you 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 take it up over here, yeah, not. Uh, oh, hmm. those are okay. Yeah, so we have one pin header over here. Anyway, this is an engineering board, so maybe they, they send it like this to us. Not sure, uh, but yeah, those are the, thing, those are the challenges. Um, secondly, what I'm going to do right now, I'm, uh, you see uh, the CPU is already uh, inside socket because we didn't have a... Uh, protective cap. Yeah, the protective cap, so Mike agreed that this was the best way to protect it. Okay, so what I'm now going to do, I'm going to remove this cover. Uh, first of all, this one is to, uh, for the M.2 slots. Uh, I think you know our solution. Let me take a screwdriver. Another problem. I, I, you know, I'm just saying what I think. Uh, and this is not like marketing, like, wow, MSI is the best, or this is a perfect solution. 
I need to put pressure on the main board. I'm just going to be honest with you. In order to screw this, uh, unscrew this. While doing this, I'm pushing the pins in the desk. And here we have a soft desk. This is basically the biggest mouse mat in the world. Mouse pad, I should say. Um, here we have a mouse. And that basically protects the pins a little bit. But if you do this yeah. on a hard surface, then yeah. And you also notice that the board, if you push, you see this? It's bending more, maybe from the back. And this is, uh, 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 one part is uh, the pins which are pushed into the desk. And the other part is the PCB which is bending. Which is no problem at all. I mean, the, the definition for the PCB, uh, the specs, it is bendable. Sometimes you see even uh, main boards which are not straight. You can just use them. That's just within spec. I mean, there are limitations <laughs> to it. So now I'm going to remove this. So don't t try to create a curved motherboard. <laughs> no, no, indeed, indeed. So okay. So uh, what I see as another potential issue. Now this is the the top of the main board, and you see over here there are no pins anymore because they are on the back. So basically this is flat. However, still you see the soldering points here. You see them? Which are normally on the back of the PCB. And normally if the grab, you grab the, the main board with one hand, you feel the pins, but they don't buy that much. Still, I mean, the, the, the last 10 years maybe, there is a aesthetics of a main board also important. So people want to have a beautiful main board. And that's also why we do this. I mean, we want to remove the cables in your case. Uh, we move them to the back side that you have, I mean, some people say airflow, but actually I don't think it helps airflow a lot, but it looks more neat. If we need to put these kind of heat sinks on top or covers or whatever you, uh, how, yeah, whatever you want to put on top of them to hide this, it's it will It's basically like cost. what you see next to the memory modules, because that's purely aesthetic. Uh, yeah, this it's one. not really cooling something there. That part. Oh, sorry, this one. Yeah, yeah. that one. So this is the uh, sorry. Uh, um, this is the chipset. Yeah, there so that's that's like an actual heat sink that helps to cool certain components. Yeah. And the same is for the one that you just screwed off because that one cools the SSDs. Yeah, that's this one over here. Yeah. So those also have a cooling purpose. So you you will usually find those on most. So I'm now going to try to remove this one. I think we already did this, right? And then I probably spent half an hour to put it back. Okay, so unscrewing this. It's also not from the top, but from the back, which used to be, uh, again, which used to be on the other side of the PCB, is now on the back. I think this one. I feel the heatsink is already. Yeah, okay, it's already loose. Okay, let's see what over here. Okay, so this is the. This is a 24 pin connector over here. And the soldering points. And the soldering side. points, which are rather doable, but, you know, it's not flat. Not at all. And if you, let's say, I mean, these heat sink, uh, sorry, like this, they all add cost. Uh, I think that's clear. Uh, especially these ones, that are, uh, what would this be, Mike? Aluminium? Yeah, it's aluminium. Yeah. So... Um, and they help with cooling, of course. But on this kind of board, I think, yeah, of course, the M.2 needs to be cooled, but over here it's just aesthetic. Yeah. You can also see that there are no thermal pads there. No. Nope. On, the, on the bottom of the... Yeah, here you have the, the memory VRM. Yeah. Uh, there are some MOSFETs over there, but typically, you know, in the high-end over, overclocking board, sometimes this is cooled uh, if they have a two-phase or maybe even three-phase, but it's actually bullshit marketing. Here, the, the, like, if you can you watch the or show the bottom of the, the heat sink that goes on top of it? Because yes. that one, it doesn't have thermal pads. Yeah. Well, there is, this, this is not a thermal pad. No, this it's is not like a, a cushion. Pad. Yeah. This is what we need on the back of the PCB to, to um, put it flat on the table. Mike, you're uh, doing the chat, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, but now, can you show the, the uh, heat sink for the M.2? Because One there moment. you see oh, that yeah, you actually I can have show the that, cooling. Yeah. Because yeah. here you have the thermal pads on the yeah. location. These are the thermal pads for the SSDs. Yeah. I see Edwin on air. He's saying, haha, marketing manager is saying marketing bullshit. Well, let me, let me react on this. Uh, you know, we as a company and as a mainboard vendor, 
are doing things because they need to be done, like like uh, cooling your M.2 SSD. But we are also we we uh, on some level, and Mike maybe have a better example than me. On some levels, we are doing things because you guys, the market, the media are expecting expecting it, which means it's driving up the cost of our boards a lot. For example, VRM. Yes, I totally agree. You need to have a decent VRM with good quality components that you can run each CPU. But nowadays, a lot of media and end users are expecting that an entry level board, and let's say not talking about this, it can run the top CPU and even overclock it. In my opinion, and you know, let, let's let's be honest, that's bullshit. That's yeah. just sometimes VRMs nowadays are a bit overspec. A like, bit. Like ninety percent would, for example, not combine a Core i9 yeah. with a B760 motherboard, but still the VRMs are capable of it. Whereas most people would run an i3 or an i5 on those. Yeah, and so and then that's why I'm talking marketing bullshit. You know, we need to do this because the market demands it. And if it's still, it has a purpose, but probably for only 10% of the people buying such a motherboard. Probably even so for less. the other 90%, yeah. they will pay the more cost. than what they actually need in terms of yeah. power on that board. Yeah. And this is just an example. I mean, it happens in a lot of more uh, aspects of, of uh, designing main boards. Um, but yeah, um, let's continue. You know, and, and yeah, I want to be honest about this. I mean, it's a new concept. It's not final at all. I mean, there are still things fine tuned. Later, I will show you some. Mechanical issues, uh, of course, there are always easy solutions. Uh, but our goal in order for Project Zero is not only to remove the cables, because, so, so look and feel improves on the front, but also to make it more easy accessible. Because if you're building a case, and later I will show you that, me with my big fat fingers and hands, you know, uh, between the VGA card and between all the components, putting a cable in, it's not easy. And now from the back, this should be. I didn't assemble this one yet. This Do you also be way more remember easier. like forgetting to plug in a certain cable yeah. and then your graphics card is installed and you can barely access it anymore? Yeah. Those yeah. are also things that are solved when they're on the back. Because you can install your graphics card, you don't need to be, well, apart from the SSD, of course, that one you need to install first. But other than that, you can just put your graphics card in there and you don't need to access it anymore. You can all access it from the back. So also in terms of the order of building, you have a bit more flexibility. Yeah. Uh, Panorian Gray says, I think the entry level boards are the ones um, that need that performance because nobody uh, buying a top tier CPU is going to bother overclocking it. But the cheap boards will probably pair with a mid tier CPU and someone will push it a bit. Not always, because usually, the, like for Intel, for example, the overclockable CPUs are the higher end CQs. Those yeah, are the, the K CQs. Um, those are also the ones drawing more power. So there you will. By default, even without overclocking, need a more powerful VRM. Yeah. Um, nowadays, like some of the top-end models can push over 300 watts of power. That's a lot. Um, whereas a lot of people buying a cheaper board uh, will probably go for like a B-series chipset and a non-K CPU. So those are not overclockable in general. AMD is a little bit different um, because on AMD you can actually uh, overclock on the CPU on B series as well, yeah. and also the cheaper processors are overclockable on AMD. That's not the case with Intel. So it, it, it differs a bit there where you're going AMD or Intel. But in general, the, the higher end boards um, will push more powerful processors, and even without overclocking, they need a lot more powerful VRM to get the most out of it. I'm going to put the uh, Ember 2 in, um, because then I can put the heatsink back. Um, I think we're just using this slot. Uh, then I will put one heatsink back, which in my opinion is needed uh, for the cooling. Of course, it's a big one. It doesn't have to be this big. Uh, but then I can also show you what we added extra to hide the, the pins. This is a one terabyte uh, Spatium M390 SSD, I think you're yeah, using, right? Yeah, yeah, M390, which is uh, a PCI Express Gen 3. Yeah. So this one. You see, uh, it uh, cools two M.2s, but it's also a bit oversized. And that is just to cover those pins. So this makes sense. It doesn't, uh, I mean, you would already have a block aluminium here. Uh, so it Usually the heat sinks, especially on higher end boards, tend to be a bit bigger yeah. anyway. Uh, because of the cooling capacity, if you have a bigger surface area. By the way, the board does support PCI Express Gen 4. Um, it's just we're using a Gen 3 SSD because we had this we one had laying around with an installation. Yeah. But the Kay. board can support Gen 4. So 
this is how a normal board would look more or less. Meaning over here there is no heat sink, so you still see the pins. And maybe you know if you make a build with RGB, uh, this uh, let's let's see later. I mean you would not notice this, or maybe it's not annoying. But we now in this sample, I, I don't know how the final boards will look. Um, in this sample, uh oh, I have a screw here. That's no, oh, that's over for this. <laughs> Woo, phew. Uh, let me see how we do this. Okay, like this. Yeah. So, Gigaram says you forgot to take the tape off the thermal pad. Uh, one was already taken off. Yeah. So now Eric point. is only using the, the top slot, uh, but indeed the, the bottom reminder. one still had, had like protective tape on it. But that slot is currently not being used. Okay, so I'm uh, reconnecting this heatsink, attaching it again. Uh, NRT says the only AMD boards that are really locked down for frequency and power are A-series. They don't even have PBL. Yeah, that's correct. The A-series, like the really entry-level AMD motherboards, um, they do not support CPU overclocking features. Okay. And the B-series and the X-series do. So now the board has one M.2 uh, and the CPU already installed. Um, anything else, Mike, about this board besides that it keeps biting me? No, not specifically. It's like, in, in general, there is not actually not that much different between a Project Zero board and a regular motherboard, apart from the connectors that are on the back. Yeah. Other than that, they're very close to each other. So also in terms of price, you will see a bit sim well, pretty similar price. It shouldn't make much of a difference. Um, the only thing that Eric already mentioned that could add a bit of cost is when you cover certain parts on the front. Um, and again, I mean, this is, a, 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 let's say, an internal engineering sample. Yep. Not sure how the final board will look like. And this is also something that you may see different in like entry-level boards and higher-end boards yep. in the future. Like the more entry-level boards, they may not have those covers uh, and also not add the cost on top of uh, it. I'm just saying, you know, uh, these are the things we need to consider and, and this is adding cost. And uh, if we are going to do this to cover this up, you guys will complain, oh, Project Zero, or whatever it's going to be called, it will cost more. Mm, not technically not, because the connectors are just put on the back, and yes, it will be a little bit more costly in the beginning because uh, of the, the, the assembly line. Uh, but as soon as it's more be. common and you're going yeah. to do bigger volumes, then the cost of Project Zero will, will not be that much higher yeah. than a normal board. But now we're adding these heat sinks. Uh, I don't think I did this run correctly. Hmm. Oh, yeah, no. You put it the wrong way around, though. Did I? I don't know. N Did oh, you? yeah. That could be. No. No, 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 no. This is correct. No, it's not correct. Okay. Yeah, this is correct. Uh, Divina Duckward says, Project Zero looks interesting. ATX is an old standard. Well, actually, it's still like micro ATX that we're using. So in terms of dimensions, it's all, it's all still the same. Um, location of the components is also pretty much the same. It's just moved to the backwards for the connect uh, to the backside uh, for the connect. I don't know, Mike. But the form factor is still the same. Um, mm. Also, an interesting thing of by it being still micro ATX is that the case that we will launch in the future, like the specific project, like it, it will be called different when we launch it. But the Project Zero case, um, so but to say. But that's maybe also a good topic. That's also compatible with a normal micro ATX board. So it, even if it's like not a motherboard with the connectors on the back, you can put an, a normal micro ATX in. Yeah. Let's maybe look at the case. But that's also an interesting question. I mean, we internally call this Project Zero. What about a good marketing name for this? What about a good name that is recognizable, like reversed ATX? Or, <laughs> you remember BTX in the past? Yes, I do. CTX. Can be, right? Just put your suggestions in the chat. So right now, Project Zero is a bit of our Too internal long. work, yeah. <laughs> like project name for it. Okay, let's. Uh, well, I'm going to. I'm going to put the memory in. NRT says ATXR. Sesco says backend fun. Okay, <laughs> so Gigaram says Stinger. <laughs> uh, we have these two uh, dims. Uh, try and see with RGB. Uh, match nicely with the motherboard, but we found out that these don't work because it's an engineering board. Uh, probably old Agisa code. So they don't boot properly. Yeah, this uh, this board is like a bit of a sketchy sample still. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't function 100% properly. Um, so we tried these modules, and even though the modules work fine on our on our normal boards that like have a proper BIOS, 
they don't work properly on our engineering sample. Um, so we're going to use black modules for now, which is a pity yeah. because these match nicely with the motherboard. Uh, uh, but the other modules. ones work properly. I think they're the same. It's also Z5 Neo RGB, and this is uh, the 5 RGB. Yes, actually, these are a bit higher end modules. Uh, usually, you would usually not combine it with like a B650 board because the, the modules are a bit more expensive. It's DDR5 6000 CL30, uh, which is like more enthusiast level memory. They're really good modules, but they're just a bit too high end for this build, maybe. Okay, so. But these work properly on it. This is another problem. Uh, I will remove this memory slot, but normally, you know, if you insert memory, uh, or should they go like this? <laughs> no, no, no. This won't fit. <laughs> no, th th this won't fit. So, but I had to push quite hard. So, yeah, th that's what I'm saying, you know. I have to push like this to insert it. And while pushing, I'm pushing the pins in the desk over here. Lucky, most force is in this corner where we have the CPU. Uh, where are they? Uh, where we have the CPU uh, two times eight. And we have a 24 pin. So I think it will not do a lot of damage. And I'm not saying this final, you know, still looking for, for uh, things like fixing things, feedback to, to uh, uh, make it uh, something nice. But yeah, that's what I see, you know, doing it right now. This will maybe damage some pins as well. And what you don't want to do, what I see here, over here, you don't want to push on top of a capacitor. Because if this one goes <laughs> sideways, <laughs> you lose uh, functionality. <laughs> and let me see. Uh, there is only one capacitor on the back. That's quite strange, Mike. Yeah, I don't know why there is one capacitor on the back. Because that could have been on the front, I think. Uh, yes. I don't see any reason why you It's shouldn't. between the, oof, the, rest I would of the say USB. The so maybe it's USB related. Yeah, but also still, it could have been on the... Maybe it's uh, a distance issue to the heatsink. <sighs> Like clearance? No, Maybe no, 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 for sure not. Oh, no, that would look yeah. like it would But it fit. would be strange to put one on top as well. I mean, then it's all empty except for over there. E yeah, but like all the other capacitors are also in the front of the board still. Yeah. Because uh, there is nothing you're going to connect on the capacitor. Yeah. So we're just live debugging, not really debugging, but giving comments and, and complaints and things what we will also feedback to our engineering team uh, to improve. Can you put the memory module in the correct location, by the way? Oh, shit. <laughs> You mean the first two slots? No, like skip the first one. Yeah. Then fill one. Skip one. Fill. Here it says. Oh yeah. <laughs> Never mind, Mike. Ah, this one is really. Yes, and on the first slot, yeah, the closest to you. Second time this happens to me. Yeah. Now it's correctly inserted. Yes, those are the correct ones. Okay, uh, let's move to the case. Mm, I'm going to put this <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to put this here. Don't <laughs> want to put it on. Uh, Mad Cow says thank you. My OCD was going nuts with that. <laughs> okay, the case. Uh, so, what is special about the case? What needs to be different? First of all, Important. I mean, on this side, nothing special. You just yeah, have it's just to a place a tempered glass side panel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, nothing special regarding a normal case. So I'm going to put this on the ground. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Will it break? No. <laughs> no. Okay. So here you just see a normal case. You can put your main battery over there. Your GPU at the bottom, but we will lose a lot of cables. Not all of them. Well, I mean, the tubes for the uh, liquid cooling we're going to use today. So what is special on this case is on the other side. How to best show this? Maybe like this. So I'm going to open it up. First of all, uh, Mike, can you in the detail cam? Yeah, so mm, maybe like this. So first of all, the depth in which the tray is located, that's <laughs> difficult to show. 
the depth in which the tray is located, so this part, it's a bit awkward for me here, it's much more deeper because you need to have room for the cables over here. I don't know in centimeters, Mike, you know? No, I don't know exactly, but it's indeed it's the, the clearance is a little bit more than with the, yeah. the standard case. Because you have uh, cables like SATA, which are not all angled. Uh, you have cables like uh, the, the power cables. Yeah, yeah the power cables uh, over here. They're they relatively are thick cables with quite sturdy, a big connector thick as well. Indeed. Yeah. So, and RT says, where's the banana for measurement? That's a good one. Uh, yeah. Last one I ate, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have one right here. Yeah. This mo this moment. Well, I saw one uh, downstairs. And you that wasn't eaten yet? No. <laughs> here you have a can of Coke for scale. Yeah, well, that's an odd size, this <laughs> can of Coke. And anyway, I'm not going to put it in because then... Uh, then it won't be a white, white case for long. <laughs> no, indeed, indeed. So that's the first thing, because cables, uh, first of all, connectors are sticking out over here. Because these are the mounting holes, uh, these are the, the uh, holes through which the connectors are uh, put. And here at the bottom as well. So the connector will stick out a bit. And then you have the, the uh, oh, that's not a good example. The connector will stick out a bit. Maybe I'll do it like this. The connector will stick out a bit. And then you have the cable inserted, which also cannot always angle uh, like after one centimeter or something. So you need to have space here. That's why this tray is a bit deeper inside the case. What was your problem? Not at all, because you still have enough uh, space for uh, your GPU to put it in, uh, for the liquid cooler, uh, for the fans. Also even a tower cooler, because this case is a little bit wider than most cases, I would say. Yeah. But it's not, not on purpose for that. No. Just the case design. Um, yeah, and, and I already uh, talked about these, these holes. Of course, I said there is only one difference, but uh, two differences. You also see them from this side. Um, Nuru says someone <laughs> spray white paint on the fan hub. Yeah, that's a black one, but it's, it's behind the motherboard tray. Yeah, you won't this see is it still in engineering. Yeah. It's still <laughs> engineering one. But and also the black cable over here. I think it's even in our white case that are on the market, it's still black, but it's behind the motherboard tray. You will yeah. never be able to see it. No. Let's Later we'll it. put it together yeah. <laughs> and get it hopefully working. So um, this, this tray in which you put the main board is directly the big issue. Because we, we already talked during the Computex live stream about uh, compatibility. Uh, I mean, more vendors are working on this. So can you put a MSI uh, Project Silent mainboard in a case from uh, Corsair? At this moment, still a question mark. Or thermal take or whatever, you know. So um, I know, you know, several vendors uh, showed this at, at uh, what was it, Computex, right? Mm -hmm. um, but compatibility is an important topic because you guys, you don't want to buy a mainboard from MSI which does not fit in a case from Thermaltake or from Cooler Master or from whatever brand because that case is made from a different uh, standard. Uh, yeah, so that's what I see now as one of the, the big issues, compatibility. Uh, are companies talking with each other? Yeah, on certain levels. But you know, that's always difficult. It's not like Intel uh, in the past. You know, I, to be honest, I don't know the, the facts over here. Mike, can you maybe switch to main cam? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the, the, the facts here, but I believe that either there is Intel would have find in the past the ATX standard, or there is a consortium, like what you have with JDAC for the memory, uh, or uh, USB ORC for the USB standard, in which, of course, Intel, AMD, and all those companies are uh, uh, joined together in order to approve and, and to um, uh, follow those standards. I don't know how that went with... Uh, uh, with um, with ATX or BTX. I know BTX was uh, uh, primarily made by Intel uh, because they want to push it uh, for having better airflow in the case. Yeah, Actually, Intel was, was indeed the one introducing it. Yeah. But and it's a long time ago. I'm not sure if everyone in the chat is familiar, but I think it was like, whew, when was it? 15 to 20 years ago, I think? Yeah, BTX? yeah, it could be. I would say uh, 15 years yeah. ago, indeed. And basically, the idea was also to get optimized airflow because everything yeah. is in a certain direction. And with ATX, for example, memory modules, they're like blocking airflow because they're not in the direction. So you will now they're vertically in a case. Then you would in BTX you have them horizontally. That's an example of 
of what BTX does different than, than ATX. Yeah, I had a BTX MOBO. Yeah, this was uh, mainly used by OEMs and system integrators. Yeah. Uh, at that moment, I was sales, and um, I yeah, we had them on the price list, but yeah, it was only for SIs in 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 in, in Holland, uh, where in the Benelux, where I was sales that moment. Um, but yeah, it never took off. No, uh, you know, uh, OEMs did it, used it for uh, for some but time. But for DIY, it never got the, the nope. traction that was expected. Yeah. Um, so. Divina is asking, is flex power supply the smallest power supply? No, Pico, no, I think. You, you can go even smaller than Flex, like uh, Pico PSU is even smaller. No. But Flex is definitely like one of the, the smaller ones for regular builds. Like Pico is also, in terms of, of wattage that you can go, is very limited. Uh, on you, a flex, you ask an ITX question, yeah, my on a flex ATX, you, like on certain Flex ATX power supplies, you could still run um, a discrete graphics card, for example. No. On Pico PSU, that's, that's difficult. So. Um, if we now want to have this as a standard with Intel, probably this will take five years. You know, I'm not saying Intel is a slow company, but they have, you know, they do uh, really enormous testing uh, to make sure everything is not only compatible, they define everything to the, the, the smallest millimeter or spec. Or, or they do a lot of compatibility tests uh, with, with existing hardware. Um, I'm joking, five years, I don't know, but you know, this, this will take a long time. Uh, and yeah, uh, I know case vendors are talking with each other, mainboard vendors are talking with each other, but you know, that's always a bit, uh, uh, we will take the lead or we will follow what standard. Because um, in the end, they're also all competing companies. All competing so companies, so that's Every company has their own agenda that basically fits their needs, yeah. but that's not necessarily what the industry needs. Yeah, so. If we want to make this a success, in my opinion, my personal opinion, not MSI opinion, I have to say that. Otherwise, I'm fired tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? So, uh, Eric, it's your last live stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. Oh, <laughs> nice knowing you. Thank you for support. No, but uh, you know, I think this, this needs to be like uh, uh, everybody joined together to set one standard on the market that you, as a consumer, as an end user, you know, if I buy a main board and I don't like this case, I can go for another brand or uh, if I sell my mainboard on the second uh, hand market uh, after a few years, then I know this guy doesn't have to worry about case compatibility. It's not like only one or two cases. Uh, it will be uh, wider than that. And in order to really, I mean, this is my personal opinion. Uh, internally, we're also, of course, uh, uh, advocating, pushing for this. Is advocating the right word? Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, uh, uh, Trying to convince people, uh, trying to get people on board with this idea, and then uh, actually add it, act, acting on it. And like what I said, behind the scenes is already a uh, work in progress, not only from our side, but from the people uh, who talk with other companies, etc. Um, but we will launch this version this year, end of this year. Uh, I know it's compatible with several other brands, but too early to talk about that. Uh, that's for later. But I think. It will take maybe until 2024, 2025, until there is really a standard that you more defined. Or it failed. That is also the case. What, what can happen? The case. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Mike, anything to add on that? No, like in terms of, that's also why it is important that the case that we're going to launch that supports these kind of motherboards is also still compatible with other motherboards. Yeah, so that's that's a nice thing. Uh, our case will, not this case, I mean, we will launch the Aquarium one. Uh, not the other way year. around, by the way. So if you have a Project Zero motherboard and you put it in a regular case, that will not work. Because no. you do need the cutouts. Yeah, but these cutouts over here. Yeah. Uh, in the case, the Aquarium case, uh, we will put on the market later this year. It will support so both one. the normal ATX and the Project Zero motherboards. So case-wise, it's no problem. So we're trying to do our best, you know, to, to make it compatible. Um, and then we look, you know, this one is a micro ATX board. Um, and I will put it in the case. Uh, we also need to think about ATX, mini ATX. Um, yeah, Mike, mini ATX, do you think this, uh, there's a... Uh, Demand for it, or you, you are the expert. Um, Do you think it will be useful? Because it depends very much on the case. Like because Mini ITX is so small, you get more exotic layouts for cases in general. And for some cases, it could be really beneficial. For other cases, because I, for example, using like a sandwich layout case, it's called where the uh, motherboard is on one side and a graphics Which card. Which uh, mastery level is that? No, that's that's too difficult for you. The building <laughs> process. <laughs> 
That's more like expert <laughs> ITX. Okay. No, but okay. you basically my motherboard and my graphics card they're back to back. So my mother my graphics card I'm going is behind to do the my motherboard. While Mike is talking. Yeah. So if you would put the connectors on the back of the motherboard, that will be interfering with my graphics card in the layout I'm using. Um, but this depends very much per case. I, I could see. Like um, we have been uh, building um, a mini ITX uh, system. Well, you have been building a mini ITX system a couple of months ago, I think. Yeah, I, um, I still have nightmares from it. And that one was in the Cooler Master NR200P. And in that case, it could actually work. You would need some more clearance behind the motherboard tray. And extra clearance is, is like a swear word in mini ITX. Um, but there, it, it could work because there is nothing located behind that motherboard. Um, on which form factor uh, would you like to see this? Is it because now we're working on micro ATX. Extend, would you, extended ATX. Would you want to see it on ATX, extended ATX, or, <laughs> or ITX? It's like, well, what would your preference be? I'm, we're cur so curious to hear that. Meanwhile, I'm going to put the main button in. Uh, actually, I don't have a cam to show you that. Uh, I'm just going to put uh, two screws in and then yeah, uh, I'll do the rest. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to see on this one. Yeah, but yeah, nothing to see. So, uh, but you know. Nothing is different from this point of view. You just put the main board on the tray. I will do it like this. Uh, oh, sorry. Main cam. Skeets and control both say ATX. You just put it in like this and you put the screws in. Same uh, number of screws, standard. same mounting holes. No problem over there. Yeah. So, no change. But for me, this is uh, more easy. Mike, uh, you give me a yell when I do the wrong uh, order of things, right? No. <laughs> I th yeah, it's a, it's not that small. So here you can do a lot in the, in the order that you prefer. It's not like mini ITX yeah. where you get punished for it. Uh, Sesco says personally, I would prefer ATX or extended ATX. Divina says mini or nano ITX if possible. <laughs> nano. Nano is, is like very small. Yeah, uh, we have nano uh, uh, boards, but then you're looking uh, at our uh, server department or industrial department. We want to do a live stream about that, um, but first of all, we're no experts. I mean, we know the chipsets, we know the, 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 the connectors on those boards, uh, and you know. So, but yeah, we, we don't know all the small. Like the embedded smalls. systems are a very specific market. Yeah, indeed. So yeah. we don't know the, the how do you say that applications, etc. How and where to use that. Uh, secondly, we don't have samples, so uh, may, you know. We can do it from the website, uh, for sure we can talk for two hours, no problem there. Uh, but I always prefer to have samples on hand. Okay. Now Eric's screwing in the motherboard. Yeah, this one isn't easy. What's your challenge? Not easy is no challenge. <laughs> that just takes more time. You, you gave me three different types of screws. Uh, Simi is saying, to be honest, I hope the standard never gets established and I will avoid it like the plague. It increases waste in between records, old cases, and you uh, can't see the connectors if something went wrong. Well, you can actually see the connectors if you remove the, the other side of the case, or the, other, the, the other panel, I'll show the other you. side panel. Um, how, how does it increase waste? Yeah, like maybe I could see an argument there, like maybe otherwise you would still use your old case for longer, but now oh, yeah. you're yeah, adapting yeah. to That's a new true. standard. Uh, but on the other hand, it's it's not like people don't buy new cases right now. And it's also no, yeah. Yeah, I've, that's bullshit. I want to say it's also no must to upgrade, but yes, you need to upgrade the case uh, if you want to go to Project Zero or the, the reversed yeah. ITX or whatever it's going to be called. Did already some people? Hello. No, that's not a good name suggestion. For the for the connectors, I don't really see any issues because from from the back you can actually access them more easily than in, in a regular okay. case. I would say. So what I did? Mainboard inside the case, easy. Um, so this case already comes with a few fans. Uh, fan in the back. I think it's RGB because I have uh, yeah. two type of connectors, one for power and one for RGB. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch to the back. Uh, here there is some hole. Uh, yeah. Not much different than a normal case. But no, in basically normal the, the cable management holes are a bit bigger now, so also the connectors can go through. Yeah. So I'm just going to put this over here. 
for now. Edwin on is asking RGB or ARGB, these are all addressable. So all ARGB effects. But it's just an engineering sample. Uh, we have also some uh, fans on this side. So in the front of the case there are three fans. And over here there are two RGB fans. And there's one on the top as well. Oh, oh yeah. But like the wow. when we received one, two, the case, three, we four. only it only had four fans. So the three in the front Five, and one six, in the back. Seven. And I put the one in the the ones in the side and the top in. Um, mostly because on the side, otherwise there was one big hole that you could see the cables too much. So I thought it would look prettier if there were fans in there. You're right. Okay, so what and I'm now going to do? Anyway. I'm going to take all these cables out. I'm going to put them on the side. <coughs> Rectaldo is asking, is the fan on the back blowing air in or out? That's an exhaust fan, so it's blowing air out of the case. So what I'm now going to do is the PSU. I'm going to put it in. So, uh, Mike, you can talk a bit about this PSU. Yeah, it's so like this is actually a, a one of our older PSUs. They're still very good power supplies, but we launched some, some newer models recently. This is an MPGA 750 GF power supply. Um, it's an 80 plus gold power supply and as you can see it's the white version and that's also why we're using it today because uh, we also launched the GL series recently, also very nice power supplies. Um, and we also have the, the A750G for example, but those uh, we didn't have on hand in, in the white version. Uh, the GL will also come in white by the way in the near future. Okay, well this I should be able to show. But 750 watt power supply is actually overkill for the configuration that we're using today uh, because we're using uh, a Ryzen 5 7600X in combination with um, a GeForce RTX 4060 Ti power supply. Uh, it's so a bit of a challenge because I need to do everything in front of the camera that you guys also can enjoy my uh, struggle. So this power supply is a bit, a bit overkill for today's system. But yeah, we, we, re we really wanted to use a wide power supply for this. Now, oh, come on. Um, Edwin on Air says, Project Zero, reduce the amount of cables needed is maybe a thing. Um, it doesn't really reduce like the number of cables you have, but it puts them out of sight. That's, that's the main thing. So the cables are still there, but they're now more hidden behind the motherboard tray instead of having, them, having to pull them to, to the front of the motherboard and having to plug them in there. Well, you know, you have a good point or, or a good question because when we, uh, Mike and me, we started to talk about Project Zero and like what are the possibilities with it, uh, we also, you know, you're going to put now, you're going to put the connectors on the back of the main board, which, uh, uh, which is more easy, more accessible in the back. Uh, I, I will show you later. And, um, uh, it looks more beautiful. But we were thinking, okay, what can we do more? So Mike was maybe suggesting, suggesting like, why should this not be a 12 uh, volt standard? Because then you need less cables. Yeah, it's a 12 volt only. So yeah. we're talking about the Intel 12 volt main boards and power supplies. Not sure if you heard about this. Um, basically, you don't have uh, the ATX uh, uh, 24 pin connector anymore. So less cables. So basically your power supply will only provide 12 volts to the motherboard and in case you have certain devices that need a different voltage, that will be regulated by your motherboard. So for example, the power connector for like SATA power connector for an SSD, that one will go through the motherboard because it also needs 5 volts for example. Um, another uh, thing what we were uh, dreaming about, one of my nightmare connectors. And I'm sure This is a nightmare microphone? No. Oh. Did you unplug it? Yeah. Oh, so that's a, the nightmare connector. <laughs> yeah, now it's, it's better. I, I hope I'm back again. If you cannot hear me, I can go home. Um, I think it should work again. Yeah. So uh, what I was talking about? Uh, yeah. Nightmare connector. Nightmare connector. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Wow. So as you can see, you still have a lot of cables. It's not like the, the number of cables got reduced. I don't see it anymore here, Mike. Follow the round cable. Oh, yeah, no. It's this one? Yep. No. Oh, it's also a round cable. Okay, there is another round one. Not this one. Not the flat one, that's the Type-C. 
this one not, this one not. Is it still somewhere here? No? Why? Where is it? You lost your nightmare cable. That's a good thing, right? Yeah, that's a good thing. Or maybe, maybe I'm blind. What the hell? Yeah. This is a round cable. And I believe that's also the one you're searching for. Is it? Yeah, it should be. Sesco says it just vanished. Project Zero is a success. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it is. It's not, not a round cable. It's a flat cable, mic. <laughs> oh, is this your nightmare cable? This I thought is you, my nightmare. I thought anyway. you were talking about the USB 3.0 header no, cable. No, 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 no. Ah. Anyway, let's talk about this. So Mike and me were, you know, in the past, there was no clear uh, definition for those uh, small connectors about the HDD LED, the power button. The reset the button. The reset yeah. button. So a lot of vendors like Asus, MSI, probably Gigabyte as well. You know, we came up with a, with a, a block, uh, which was uh, with the correct pin layout, and then you could put this on. But still, you have those those uh, small connectors. What was it called? Yeah, like M, M connector? M connector for M -connector. MSI, yeah. So probably uh, it was an A connector in ASUS. <laughs> I don't know those fancy marketing names. So we were, we were uh, discussing like, why can this not be one cable? And then there is one standard. I mean, you now you see this over here. You have a lot of cables. Probably some can, can be combined into one. And then you just have one cable from your case to your motherboard. You put it in and it works. Not the nightmare I'm going to do later. All right, throw those aside. Um, Can you maybe show my nightmare cable, the USB 3.0 front header? Yeah, this cable. Because this is still an engineering sample, but this is quite a standard cable for a USB 3.0 front connector. Usually this would not really be a problem, but as you can see, the connector itself is really big, so there's a lot of plastic on top of it. If you plug this in this motherboard, maybe you can do it, Eric. Uh, yeah. You can see that it sticks no. out quite far. And that's where the issue arises. Because even in this case, the clearance is not enough. So this is where you see like the mechanical challenges that you have with Project Zero. Yeah, it's all white. Yeah. So, so if this is plugged in, you would... Uh, you cannot close the side panel anymore, so you would already need like an angled connector. So this is also something we're addressing um, for like the actual case that we're going to launch. But in this engineering sample, we could already see that this is an issue. But you can also argue, uh, why do we have still? Why do we still have this cable? Because we also have this connector over here. Let me. I, I cannot see it. So yeah, Type C front panel. But I was close, right? Yeah, you were very close. You were actually on top. This yeah. one. Yeah. We also have this one, which basically is the same functionality. And this was a like the first version, not really a standard between vendors. It slowly became a standard, but then this one took over. Faster speeds, much more easier to plug in. Do we have one here? Yeah, we have one here, uh, which is this cable. And here you can see it's already a special cable. It's a, it's more flat. It doesn't have a very big connector. So this one doesn't have any issues. No, you just put it in. And you can still easily close the side And panel, it yeah. says about, well, 1.5 centimeters or something. Yeah. Oh, Another challenge, more. we need to relocate our um, RGB hub, for example, because right now when this uh, is plugged in the front USB 3.0 header. black thing you guys were already complaining about, it's black. Yeah. Yes, it's black. <laughs> But now you're also with that connector, you're blocking some of the, the RGB outputs on that hub. Yeah. So right so now we, w we will not use it anyway, so we can access the, the hub because the, yeah, otherwise we cannot close this high panel. But these are all things that, that basically you can see when you have your first engineering sample. So this is still development process, of course. Yeah. What I'm going to do, I'm going to connect these uh, to uh, bad boys. CPU. And it's quite simple. On the back. And now I'm not really doing cable management. Should I, Mike? Of course you should. <laughs> Why do I ask you this? Well, in the end, you want to be able to close the side panel, right? So. Yeah, that's, that's, that's correct. <laughs> but this probably is one of the connectors which does not, which is very difficult to connect on the front side. Especially if there is already uh, an all-in-one liquid cooler in the top. So if yeah. you have a radiator there, also it's impossible to unplug them. 
So well, this, this is all. Is you just much easier. put it on there. And, and this is also one suggestion. At this moment, you know, I don't know how well this will develop in the future. Normally, when I <laughs> when I screw in a mainboard in the tray, I, I like I screw like three or, or four screws and then in each corner, and then it's enough for me. But because normally you're pushing from the front, from uh, this side, you're pushing when you're, you're putting things inside or cables. Now you're going to push from the other side, and this means also when not all the cables, of, when not all the screws of the main board, all nine, I would say, right, Mike? Nine? And in this one, I think you have six. Oh, six. Okay. Are you sure? <sighs> or do you have nine? Yeah, six. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, you're going to push the other side, so you need to make sure you screw them all, all tightly because you're going to put some pressure on there. No, you actually should have nine because you have like the wide standard micro ATX, like the square version. You also have like the, the narrower one. So, yeah, uh, quite easy. I mean, uh, easy accessible. Uh, this for me, normally, uh, besides, <laughs> well, actually, I think all connectors for me with my big fat, fat hands are uh, a problem. But normally, where the, the, the USB connectors at the bottom, uh, audio, uh, most of them you can put in, but this there is normally already LC installed or the heat sinks, uh, which means on this side you need to go here somewhere and you need to uh, uh, pull the cable through. Then you need to angle it and connect it uh, somewhere in this corner. Especially normally. disconnecting them is hard in that location. Also, yeah, because you have the clip, and that's usually the hardest part, especially yeah. if you have top fans or even a radiator installed. On the back, this is very easily accessible, so also very easy to unplug them because you can And no cable them. management needed. I just plug them in and you don't have to uh, get rid of them. This is for you. It's like a lazy build. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, indeed. Same. This one. I'm going to take this one out. What is this? Oh, GPU. 24-pin. Uh, Rectaldo says, um, that's bad advertising of this case. Well, this case will not come to the market. This is just an engineering sample. This what, is basically is just for us to try out. So what is bad advertising, Mike? Uh, I think we're, the we're, not, we're not advertising at all. So. No. <laughs> no, we're not advertising mm -hmm. this case because you you will not see this case on the market. Yeah, but yeah, like this. I mean, um, I'm going to try to put the cover on. Is that smart, Mike? Oh, you have a lot not. of cables, eh? <laughs> yeah, probably not. And I'm just going to check. Well, yeah, will work. I mean, now some are sticking out. Okay, good start, right? Yeah, not bad at all. Good start. Wait, are you going to do giveaways today? Yeah, let's. Uh, let's actually I don't know what the time idea. is. Probably one hour already. Yeah, hey, exactly. Well, not exactly. We started a bit late, but let's maybe do a, a double giveaway then. Hmm. Yeah. And immediately drop. What away. GPU is this? TikTok. Sorry, no GPU installed yet. Not yet, but you've got one on the table. Can I get a monitor? Yes. Yeah, come pick it up. No uh, problem. RTX 4060 Ti is the one on the table. Uh, let me see. Can I get a discount code for a 4070 Ti? No. We, we have our first two codes. winners of a Steam Wallet code. Eric, oh, I will on. make this a bit bigger for your eyes. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Brian, Leo, Congratulations. and Miguel. Miguel. That's yeah. like the Spanish version of me, right? Yeah, Mike, <laughs> Miguel. Uh, congrats, both with loyalty uh, congrats. bonus. Thank you. Yes. And if you have participated yet, make sure to do so. Uh, to the winners, keep an eye out on your mailbox, then we will email the codes to you in the coming days with some instructions on how to redeem them. Congrats. OK, Eric, back to you. Yeah, so um, what I now see, and then this is not really the main board, you see this cable on top here? You, we need to get rid of it, you know. It's it's for the fan, but we want to have. Um, in this in this configuration, you will not see that much of it because the radiator will be in the top, and that will block most of the cable as well. But indeed, there is still like yeah. some so of a visible cable. In what, the what we can do, I mean, we can mount this over here and then and, and, and uh, yeah, hide it uh, with some tape or something. And I saw. Co uh, Corsair, they also had a really nice solution with fans you can connect to each other with one cable, but still it's not cable free. So these kind of things need still some work in order to, to really be cable free or, or 
uh, yeah, you don't see any cable. Okay, uh, Mike is talking about the radiator and that's what I'm going to do next. Um, how can I show you this? Don't do this at home. Or maybe do it at home if it's not MSI hardware. Mike, if you disagree, <laughs> let me know. No, don't do it at home in general. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking like doing it like this. Divina says seven fans. Um, no, because Eric is now adding the radiator with two more. So then we're at nine. <laughs> and there is one in the power supply, so that's ten. And three on the GPU. So that's 13 fans in total wh when Eric is done. If Eric is done. If, 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 if. Yeah, Eric, you wish you had that many fans At on home? social media, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh. Now it looks a bit like BTX if you put it upside down. And <laughs> yeah, so what I was planning to do, here you have those holes. And um, uh, Edwin says only fans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm pulling the cables through just to get some idea where they will be located. This one as well. I see some people on TikTok are asking about the specifications, so let me pull up this visual that will cycle through all the different components that Eric is using today. So the CPU is a Ryzen 5 7600X, not a Ryzen 7. Yeah, okay, so, and then take all of them. Yeah, so uh, the cable connectors are on the back, but still you have this, these kind of things, which will be in the front, and you need to yeah, route them to the back of your mainboard where the connectors are now are. Um, Mike, uh, you agree if we do it like this? How will you now screw it in if... Uh, the, 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 Mike, 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 step <laughs> by step. <laughs> Any oh. space for dust filters? Well, there's actually um, a magnetic dust filter on the yeah. top of the case. I will show you later. I'm going yeah. to screw it in. So there you I'm can already see it. it. Like <laughs> this. Oh, you see the dust filter already. Yeah, there it is. Mike, you see? It works like this. Okay. If I have all the materials. So first you put it in and then you start searching for the screws? Yeah, 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 yeah. that's <laughs> nice. me. That's me. Um, I think this should work. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. That's my screwdriver. <laughs> Divina says maybe it will be impossible to have dust with so many fans. <laughs> it can fly. Hey, this is uh, easier than the Mini ITX build. You have a lot more space now, don't you? Well, the problem is, if I maybe attach this one, I can do the rest without... Oh my god. The easiest way is always diagonally. So you have top left now, bottom right, and then... No, well, I, want, you know, I need to have a... The problem is the camera. People need to see what I'm doing. Uh oh. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It doesn't drop that much. You're lucky that you have a magnetic screwdriver. I'm unlucky that I don't have a like a automatic tool like. <laughs> <laughs> Skeet says Eric building a PC is priceless. <laughs> oh my God. Oh yeah, you know I'm not uh, an assembly guy, so I'm not doing this for a living. But. I practice so many times here. So you're partly doing it for a living. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true. Hey Mike, maybe for my birthday, which is quite soon, you can get like uh, me an automatic <laughs> tool. Yeah, that's a good idea. Is but then something? you can destroy even more. That's a bad thing. Uh, make it like, uh, how do you say battery powered, then it's not that powerful. Yeah, but still, if you hit a PCB with it, and I know you will, <laughs> yeah, maybe I can use it to uh, unplug my VJ card. Shivangi <laughs> uh, is asking uh, MSI A620 M-E with the Ryzen 5 uh, 7600 and uh, 6750XT for long hours of gaming and editing my clips, is it right? Yeah, that's a nice combination for sure. Like that, that CPU and motherboard, very good combination, can properly run it. Also the graphics card, so it's a nice graphics card in terms of performance and price. So yeah, definitely a nice combination, I would say. 
Looks good. Uh, McCallum is asking, Project Zero motherboard are compatible with Gigabyte stealth cases? And uh, we just talked about this topic, about compatibility. Oh, so okay. you're watching on YouTube. If you reverse back in the video a bit, we um, talk quite extensively about support, about uh, st possible standardization, Again, cooperation, those kind of things. Again. Did you disconnect your microphone again? Again. <laughs> okay. So that one is connected. Now we only have to put the CPU on there. Oh, cooling paste. I love this part. Oh, we have a lot of cooling paste. Yeah, it's uh, like it feels like 30 grams. And no, don't use all of it. <laughs> this is probably the easiest job. Because, um, oh, hey, wow, wow. How to do the GPU cable? I still have a GPU power cable over here, which needs to go to the front. I think this is the best location, right? And then on top of the GPU? Yeah. From, yeah? Or, yeah? Which cable management hole did you use now? It's a bit hard to see. Which what? Cable management hole. It's a hole is a hole, Mike. <laughs> Can uh, you angle the case a bit? On top? Yeah, I think that, that one makes most sense. When you look at the location of the power connector on the graphic yeah. card, I would also put it here. So what I'm now going to do, I'm going to put it again flat for as far as possible on the table. So some parts you will not see. By the way, we are cheating a little bit with this liquid cooler because usually there is a cable out of the CPU block and that's because there is RGB inside the CPU block. Mike. Yeah. Mike. Do you think this is too much? No, like a full tube should be fine, right? <laughs> it's, it's more than I would do. <laughs> That's why I'm showing you. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. Um, but yeah, usually you would have like a cable for the RGB sticking out of the CPU block for the for the LED and the, and the MSI logo. Mm -hmm. Right now, of course, we, we don't want much, many cables, so we just took the cable out. But that also means that RGB in the block uh, will be switched off. I don't like, I mean, there's only, I can only put the tubes on the outside. I would also put in an outside here. Yeah, The block is rotatable anyway, so you can always put the, the logo Yeah, but so uh, we, we talked about it. it, it will be like a cable-free uh, build. Mm -hmm. However, you still have the, the, the tubes over there. The tubes are not really cables though. Yeah, but still, I mean, you want to have a clean build. So you want to get rid of the tubes? Yeah. Then you have an air cooler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's correct. I don't like this uh, connection mechanism for AMD. You don't? No. Not really the biggest fan. You mean with the uh, plastic clips? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the benefit of like having the, like the mechanism that Intel uses is that you have four pressure points. Here you only yeah. have two. So that, that that's feels uh, better uh, to me. Okay, so what I'm now going to do... Um, Control Soft is asking, is the pump in the CPU block or the radiator? For this specific um, uh, all-in-one liquid cooler, it's in the radiator. But some of our other models have it in the, in the CPU block. So our K series and our S series have it in the CPU block. Oh, Mike, I still need two hours for all the, <laughs> for all the RGB over here. <laughs> anyway, uh, so what I did, I, uh, I uh, put the, 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 what is it, the PCI Express 8-pin uh, power to the front. This will be for the GPU. I mounted the cooling block over here. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I didn't have any space for the tubes to be in the rear. Uh, so only uh, over here and this means also because of the sturdy tubes I can only put the tubes in the rear and yeah that might block some of the view uh, depending on how it will be with the GPU later um, and yeah I, you know I want to have a clean look which you already see there are no cables we have here we have a fan cable and like what I said this one maybe you can push to the top a bit Oh, that's this one. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if I have the tools for that to properly mount it. And for the rest, 
that's it, I think. So what I'm now going to do, first finish the front. I'm putting the, the GPU in. Yeah, you can. So GPU, we're using the, let me see. Usually you would first connect all the cables, but now because Eric yeah. can do it from the back anyway, you can already put the GPU in. So using the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gig Ventus 3X. Checking <laughs> if we don't break NDA. <laughs> <laughs> if there's like a new GPU we didn't launch yet. We normally, this is internally, uh, we label our stuff. Or we, uh, FE, so we just borrowed uh, FE. We don't have a says white. The cooling block retention design is on MSI, not AMD. You can remove those plastic clips and use four holes in the metal back plate, yeah. like my Noctua. Yeah, it, it depends on the, the model that you're oh. using for MSI as well. Some indeed do that. Uh, this model doesn't. Um, but yeah, the, like this design is AMD, but these coolers use the AMD design and we have other models where you indeed have to take uh, the clips off and there you screw it straight into the back plate basically. And for AM4 you would usually see like a custom back plate, for AM5 it already comes with the back plate that you can then often use with the, with the liquid cooler. Mm, I cannot put them with you. Anyway, I'm taking out these two brackets to put the GPU in, almost forgot about that. Um, Eric style, I put the GPU in. Not sure if everything, yeah, it connects. So now I need to put two screws here. The power cable, well, uh, is the power. You oh, have here, to drag middle. your tubes a bit upwards. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's okay. that's fine. What? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, what did you say? Your tubes? Yeah. Like the, the connector is a bit hidden underneath. The tubes, the connector is a bit hidden. Yeah, the connector of the VGA is now hidden underneath the tubes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So if yeah. you pull them upwards, yes, there is the yeah. VGA yeah. connector. So maybe do that first, not the proper, uh, I mean, I should first screw it, but this is okay. So what I'm now going to do in the back, I'm going to pull that cable, if I can find it. Uh, where did I put it? <laughs> where did I put it? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, over here, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I need to angle it a bit to make it more beautiful, I guess. Yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah, I mean... And this is still a cable that, in my opinion, needs to be addressed in, like, the whole Project Zero concept. Because that cable is still a bit of a pain in the ass for me. Because now you have, like, a whole cableless system on this side, apart from that VGA power connector. You probably saw on Computex Asus with a GPU uh, which had a power cable, uh, sorry, a power connector at the bottom. Yeah. So you don't have to use this cable anymore. And basically, the VJ card, the GPU, connects to the mainboard to get its power. And then on the back of the mainboard, there are um, the power connectors. And that mainboard had both the new PCI Express power connector and the older PEG connectors. Uh, it looks like a really Fancy, or it is, it is, not looks, it, it, it looks good and it is a really fancy solution. Yeah, the good thing is that you don't have the cables on this side anymore. You don't have any power cables. Yeah. The, the VJ card will get power via the mainboard, via mm -hmm. the connector. That's nice. The big problem over there is that uh, it's quite costly. Because your mainboard needs to have all the layers to support all the TDPs. Uh, uh, so all the power depending on what kind of GPU you're going to put into. So for the new connector that will be up to 600 watts? Yeah, and that's uh, not only costing a lot of money, it will generate heat in the PCB. I, I'm, this one I'm guessing. Uh, I, I didn't see the And there is another wheel. challenge though, because now it's like positioned um, behind the, the uh, PCI Express Time 16 slot. Um, in a motherboard, on a motherboard like this, you have plenty of space because this is like a full width micro ATX board, but you also have narrower ones. You also have mini ITX. There you don't have that space next to it. So yeah. there are also some compatibility challenges there. So I like the solution, but I don't like the cost. And I, I like the idea, but I don't like the, <laughs> the solution. <laughs> yeah, okay, that, that's, I, yeah. that's maybe the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how to say it better. So, uh, but you see, uh, vendors, companies uh, are thinking about this also how to remove uh, this cable. I believe this can only be done when NVIDIA and AMD, uh, which are the main uh, GPU, and maybe Intel with uh, the Arc uh, GPUs, when they support this kind of concept. Because it needs to be default in the design kit for the entry level. No, maybe not entry level, but you know, for the, for the MSRP SKUs. And then the high-end SKUs will also get this automatically. 
Uh, and you talk about compatibility because you can put a, a GPU like that on the market, but if you only have like five different models from uh, maybe three vendors on the market, uh, three sorry, five different mainboards from three vendors on the market, uh, which maybe have one percent market share, like Project Zero, then you know why would they make those kind of GPUs? Because it's not compatible. So um, yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, not compatible. Uh, it's uh, not compatible with with uh, uh, with members on the market with other GPUs. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, a nightmare. Yeah, it's, it, but it's nice to see that that also different companies yes. are thinking about this and there is some development on it. But in the end, there there needs to be like a solution that works for multiple situations to yeah. avoid. Yeah, and, and that's what I like, you know, the engineering, yeah. the the, the yeah. creativity behind it. Um, basically, the front is finished. Yeah, the front is uh, not that much actually, so no. that's already done. So I can go home? No. Hmm. If you turn it around, you see you're by far not finished. No, that's. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to turn it around. I want now to enjoy all the RGB cable challenge in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Only a few cables here. Only a few cables, only a few cables. Uh, but. The big benefit is you don't have to go, oh well, I was going to show you that, right? I told you three times or something already. Now, if you still want to connect, you know, my hands don't fit here. It will be, and, and I have to do this many times in the past. So uh, to, to go here, you know, it, it's it's a nightmare uh, to, to reach the, the bottom of the mainboard. Even here, you know, SATA connectors will be below the GPU. They will be blocked by the GPU. I know uh, some of you, or not maybe all of you, experienced this in the past. Uh, here as well, the liquid cooling, you know, uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's not easy to reach everything over here. In the back, it's much more easy to reach everything, because everything is over here. Let me uh, throw away, well, well, well And our away. says on, on Twitch chat, it looks like an explosion in the cable factory. <laughs> yeah, I, I put in some yeah. extra fans to make it challenging for Eric today. Yeah, anyway, so, uh, I, uh, Mike, I can always remove them, right? I take out the fence, then I solve the problem. No. Yeah, okay. That's the lazy solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hey, so uh, here you have all the pin headers on the bottom of the board. Easy accessible. You can even read the label. Uh, on top you have even some pin headers. Uh, I don't know what they are. Uh, you know, here. Uh, uh, CPU most fan header, pump fan yeah, header, yeah, yeah. taste And I'm saying header. this most logically, yeah. it's, uh, what, what Mike said, because they used to be on the other side. Here I have some pin headers. I don't know what they are, Mike. Engineering sample pin headers. Oh, it's hard to see from here. LED something. Hmm. I cannot see it on the, the camera. Maybe it's like this. Maybe it's not like this. I don't know what it is. There are also some diagnostic headers on there. Yeah, probably these are diagnostic. It's not that I recognize them. Okay, so we have a. Uh, let's start over here. Uh, we connected the, the, the 24 pin, we connected the USB connector. We already told you we're going to skip this connector. So what I'm going to do, this connector was this big boy. I'm going to hide it. I hope this works. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not going to do proper cab cable management. I'm just going to, first of all, I'm going to make sure it works. Secondly, I'm going to make sure uh, the, the, the case cl can close. And that's always a challenge. Uh, Especially, no if <laughs> Especially if you yeah, build it. Sorry? Especially if you build it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, this uh, connector we're not going to use. Then we have uh, two USB connectors, uh, sorry, two uh, SATA connectors over here as well too. Again, we're not going to use them because we have an M.2. Um, then, we're going to do this connector, audio, really recognizable. I hope it's audio, Mike. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Should Thanks be you. somewhere here. Oh, really? I. <sighs> I, I should have glasses. I would say it's this one, yeah. And you just can put it on there. That's it. Easy. Okay. Now you need to make sure everything stays, you know, uh, stays flat uh, because you want to uh, d close the case. And now I believe, I believe, the only connectors left are RGB and fan headers. No, you're missing your the the one that oh came from God. hell. Oh my God! The one from hell. Yep. Oh Mike. Oh Mike. Okay, what I'm going to do? You have to connect that one as well. 
I'm going to put it like this. You guys probably cannot see what I'm doing, but you can see me suffer, which is already good enough for you, I guess. We can also see the mouse pad suffer. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. I don't know how it happens. Ah, oh, this works. Where is this? Oh, here. Yeah, works again. Oh, Mike. We made my lenses. <laughs> <laughs> I even don't know where this connector is. Should be at the bottom. It's still labeled JFP1. I probably need to take my mobile phone. It's a, on the bottom of the motherboard, not on the side. Let me uh, take this. I'm going to, to zoom it in just to make sure. Eric's eyes are not like they used to be anymore. <laughs> okay, that's JRGB, JT1. So Eric, later this month will be your 90th birthday, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, so is it at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Then I found it. JFP1. Yes, correct. Over here. And there is a manual. Let me see where is it. Which ones I have. Uh, uh, guys, you all get old. You all get glasses at one moment. So don't pity me. <laughs> power reset power LED we don't need that right nobody will notice actually why can I not do this with a screwdriver like I normally do in my no normal environment plug these in with a screwdriver no 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 <laughs> just power it on with a screwdriver oh, power it on with a screwdriver <laughs> yeah. because in the end you want to be able to close the case oh I can make that happen <laughs> so reset is at the bottom I'm not going to do the, the HDD LEDs. Power switch is on top and, and there is one pin empty. That's strange. That's kind of strange. Okay. No, that's correct. There is one pin empty. Next to those, you plug in the power switch. Across, reset you plug is in the reset. The bottom. Yeah, reset is not next to the empty pin, but to the one that is filled that you're not using. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Then you have the power switch that is next to the empty pin. I always do the labels to the outside. Is that correct for doesn't the? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oh, doesn't matter. And then I have two left and the uh, HD. Oh, I need to zoom in as well. Then where are we? The HDD goes next to the uh, reset switch, and the uh, uh, power LED goes next to the power switch. I cannot get it correct. Anyway, one is power plus and one is power min. That's LED, right, or not? Yeah, that's both LED. Yeah, uh, those are just LEDs. put them on there, Mike. Yes, next to the power switch for the power LED. Yeah, almost. Okay. Um, uh, Phil Insecto is saying, at this point, how is it possible that there's still no single standard connector for the case connectors? I think actually nowadays, all motherboard vendors are doing the same layout. So I think we should but indeed still move to a single it's connector not a block. case. Still, you have those yeah. separated uh, cables. Yeah, but I think that's also something we should get rid of for cases in yeah. the future. But like what we discussed about, that's quite difficult because everybody needs to follow that. And but I think nowadays everyone does follow the same layout. Yeah, but then it needs to be one block yeah. or maybe one cable with one pin. I mean, why do you need all the pins? Okay, so Mike, now I'm, I'm uh, having the nightmare with all the lights, right? No, it's not a nightmare, it's a dream. It's a so dream. much RGB. Who doesn't love it? Okay, well, I'm going to first, uh, I'm going to do the, the liquid cooler over here. So this is power, this is RGB, this is RGB, and this is power. Power. Um, one is uh, three pin, the other one is four pin. Yep. So one is for the fan, and one is for the pump, right? Yeah, the pump one is a four is pin. No, it's a three pin, I think, on this one, isn't it? Uh, uh, these are all. Oh, we also have. Uh, oh, damn, yeah, damn, 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 be damn, careful. Damn. 
You know which one is which? I cannot see from here which one. Okay, which. this is <laughs> from a fan and this is coming from the front. So this is the, yeah, pompous tree. Yeah. Okay. And, and then you have two fans, so you should have two four pin connectors. Well, it's got complicated. Oh yeah, I have also the, the, the fan over here. You have a rear exhaust fan as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But that's, I can put, put that's it all on. That's also a three pin, I would assume. Sorry, yeah, that's a three pin. Yeah. And the two are a four pin. Yeah, combine so those. I'm <laughs> going to use a, a, like a splitter like this. Yes, correct. It's in black, I know, but we will put it in the back side, so that's not a problem. So those will be combined into one connector and that one goes on the CPU fan header. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm already pushing the cable down and then to the top again, just to make sure that it's flat. Oh, and then Eric thinks that will help, but in the end everything will just blow <laughs> up again. <laughs> most likely, most likely. Okay. But at least he thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> so I have some RGB uh, over here and over here. I'm going to route them to the same direction. So now it looks like this. Oh, Mike, not moving that much. <laughs> I have still the fan in the back. Here I have still a lot of <laughs> fans and stuff. Uh, and then here, I will put this here, over here. Uh, here I have the RGB cables for the, for the liquid cooling. Uh, uh, you can, uh, these you can connect on each other, right? Yes, indeed. I don't know how that so works. So you have them for the liquid cooler, but also for the exhaust fan. So you should have three from there. These are quite fragile. Look at this. Yeah, these connectors, their RGB connectors are not great. I agree. Hey, Mike. But the thing is, the <laughs> Mike. it's an industry standard, so you cannot just switch to something else. Industry standard, my ass. <laughs> Eric just tapes them. What? I, uh, but yeah, RGB connectors are super fragile. So always be very careful with those. Okay. Good. More RGB. How many can I connect on top of each other? Quite a few. Unlimited, right? Uh, at, at a certain point, you will run into limits of how much power the, the header can supply. How much volt? Um, Three? No, this, these are addressable. So these are 12 volt connectors. <laughs> but you can uh, link quite a few because the, the fans, they don't have that many RGB uh, LEDs in there. Whereas LED strips have, have way more and they can also power multiple of those. So, so it's no problem I put a... No, it's no, no problem. No, you can, you can link quite a few of them. Yeah, okay. Because so this is also only powering the RGB LEDs because the, the fan itself um, is powered, of course, by the, yeah. the three or four pin. Now, this will be a problem. I'm going to put this on the hub. And there are some cables. Big Radio is asking, Hi everyone, quick question regarding the Gleam giveaway. Is it open to Canada or only Europe? It's definitely open in Canada as well. Yeah. So feel free to participate. Only the only the axis of evil is uh, excluded. Eduardas is uh, saying, "This is why I hate RGB. I yeah. can totally imagine." Yeah. Hate to hear as well. Oh. <laughs> oh. How many pins am I allowed to bend? Zero. Everything oh, has to be perfectly straight. Then I need straighter. to pay more attention to what I'm what I'm actually trying to do. Are you sure? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't know. Luke Lord is saying Wi-Fi LED, is this the future? <laughs> Could be, or like Zigbee in your case or something. Zigbee, yeah. Oh, cool. Bring it on. I don't know, Mike, if this... Uh... But now there are so many RGB fans in this case that Eric has quite a challenge on his hand. <laughs> oh, it don't, it's, it's on there. I'm going to put some uh, tape on there. Probably not how it should be done, but I don't want that it... Eric solves everything with tape. <laughs> Duct tape. You have those that engineering chart, right? Should it move? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this RGB on the left side is all done and connected. I only have one fan connector left and I'm, I think I'm just going to put this on the PCB itself. On yeah, the just plug it on the system fan header. On the uh, system? Yeah, I have one left over here on top. Yeah, you can plug it in. Sys fan, I can still read that. Okay, so now I have I have more tape, so I can I, I 
You're going to tape everything, aren't you? You also oh, well, have like, you know. cable management stuff for this. But <laughs> if this... No, I'm going to... I'm going to do this uh, better than how... That have been... <coughs> Maybe like this. Like this. Like this. And then I'm going to put it over here. Below this. It's not uh, the best uh, case uh, cable management, but like what I said, uh, we want to get it working, we want to close it. And I don't want that stuff keeps falling. Oh, this should work. I have here some cable management stuff. Aren't, yeah, you, aren't you making it too thick now by adding the layer underneath the Mike, <laughs> the Mike, Mike, pin? you're an amateur. Come on. <laughs> okay. We're yeah, maybe I am, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> We're gonna see if the case still closes after you're done. <laughs> I don't think this uh, this matters. <laughs> no, nope, this Mc doesn't McKellen matter. McKellen says we don't expect you to be able to close it. Uh, so far, so good, I would say. <laughs> so this one I already uh, tried to hide, but it keeps coming uh, out of its uh, hole. I think I can still close it, Mike. Now I need to solve this. What? Uh, Oh my God, my, my Yeah, NRT, my. there are indeed some uh, daisy chain fan solutions. Daisy, some, some. No, 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 I mean the fans that daisy chain to each other, so oh. you have fewer <laughs> connectors. They're still very pricey though, indeed. Alan already mentioned as well. Oh, Mike. I need another uh, uh, cable, I think. I have here at least, okay, so this is, this is three to one. So I'm you actually have six more fans to connect, right? Yeah, I have three over here. Three in the front, two in the side, and one more in the top, because you only connected uh, so in the top the, the ones on the Yeah, radiator. I have two over here, then I have one more and one more, but should I untangle them or should I just go for it? <laughs> Whatever you prefer. <laughs> so your criteria is if it closes, um, you're happy. Then you, if it closes, you don't see them on the front, and if everything works, then you pass. What? Today. You don't see them on the front. And? I might add, the fans are not... Yeah, everything has to work properly and not oh. make any unwanted noises. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I have, I have three, four I have now. This is RGB. Mike, I only... Oh, five. You, you should have six of them. No. Three, four, five. Where are six then? Which connectors are you holding now? The power connectors. I think you have like two splitters with three outputs each. Uh, yeah, I still have one here. I still have one here. What's this? Um, nah. That's also. I think you will need that as well. Oh. Because you have so many fans that you. Yeah. Yeah. Need. An, you don't have enough headers for that. Oh, oh yeah, Mike! I found it. Yeah, You're you right. got. You got six in total. You're like a, like a genius. It's just basic math. <laughs> yeah, three plus three is six. Whoa. Okay. So now I have this one. I want to hide all the cables over here, but you don't want to see them. That's possible. So this is always Eric's technique. He stuffs <laughs> everything in the bottom <laughs> of a case. Hey, as long as it closes. That's true. Okay. It does work because often that's the, the, the spot you have most space oh, to. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So uh, I put this one here. Oh, that's not working. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then I. The problem is. I don't know who made the cable mess. But I don't know. ACM Venom says there goes the airflow. Oh, no worries. This is in the, the ACD tray. There's no hard drive installed. We don't need airflow there. Nope. We also don't have any fans there, by the way. So Eric can just use it to stuff all the cables. <laughs> the airflow is all like uh, on top of the, the PSU shroud. Okay, that sounds... I think I'm ready besides RGB. And this is quite easy because Besides I... RGB, he says, so in half an hour he's ready. <laughs> Mike, 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 Mike. You underestimate me a bit. <laughs> A bit. I'm not sure if this is going to rattle, but... Divina says a fanless rgb -less case is looking more and more attractive. Like I think... RGB in terms of cables, it's, it's definitely a hassle. I think I'm ready for it, Mike. 
But in the end, I think it will, if Eric does it properly, it will look very nice from the front. I, I, I'm willing to go for it. Yeah? You yeah. connected everything? D doesn't matter, we will see. You remember last time? But did you also connect them to the motherboard and did you connect the hub to the motherboard? And oh, yeah. <laughs> now, well, you know, <laughs> maybe it's time. Maybe uh, you're not finished yet. No, no, no. I just want to add something. Okay. It's very important, if you have a hub on the mainboard, to also uh, connect it. Good idea, Eric. Yeah, yeah. You're so yeah, smart. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Okay. That's this kind of connector. It's from the past. You actually like need two connectors. You need one to power it. So that's the SATA power one you're holding now. And then you have another three pin power connector and you will uh, plug that into the addressable RGB header on the motherboard. And that's for the signal, of course. And uh, should that be here? Oh yeah, yeah, I found Parentheses it. Parentheses does not need SATA power, yes. Oh yeah, 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 you're right. Okay, this one, where to get it? It's from the PSU somewhere, right? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> That's far away. You put a lot of cables <laughs> in front <laughs> <Yeah>. of it. <laughs> All my cable management goes to hell. Okay, I found one. It's not easy, but uh, why Why is there still this kind of uh, connector? Anyway, that one is connected. <laughs> Just <stop laughs> and then uh, a little bird told me that I have another connector, which is RGB. And that needs to go on the main board. Yes. And that's a nice challenge. And I use think the correct header. Use oh the addressable God, RGB to, one. Need to take my phone. Because uh, it's a five five volt one, and the other one is a uh, nine. So volt this one. is JRGB uh, uh, V2, and this is JRGB V22. JRGB. J uh, what? Or yeah? ARGB. No J. J A R G B. Do you have three pins or four pins? Three. Okay, three is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have two of them. And I was quite smart. No, actually, not. But Mike. Yes. I think I'm ready for it. Uh, do you still have something? Um, did you connect all the fans to the hub, or at least something? Two, two. I connected. Okay, and the rest you interconnected? More or less. <laughs> <laughs> Before you close the case, maybe power it on first, so you see which ones you're missing. Come on, Mike. This is not how we do it here. I want to show you what I did. <laughs> Can we go to the detailed cam? Yes. Ah, it's a bit of a cable mess. But the good thing is, it's behind the motherboard tray. Yeah, 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 yeah. So over here, uh, we have the power cables. I have the, the, the uh, liquid cooling is on top. Uh, so over here, I, I created another. I can also put it, o put it over there. Maybe we don't need this. So but check, here you see some classic Eric cable management. <laughs> hey, hey, I will patent this, right? <laughs> ah. Oh, where is it? Yeah, that's a good one, a collaboration with Spider-Man for this, because of the, the <laughs> web of cables. So all of these cables can go to the bottom. And RT says those wires across the fence would bug me. They bug me too. Because I actually tested this system before and I put them to the side and I let them through there, but Eric just puts them <laughs> in front of all the fans. <laughs> so you'll probably also be able to see them through the fans. Oh, this, was this a criteria? No. For, for today you're okay. But I, I would never do it like this. <laughs> yeah, the I actually did this to the other side of the fan. Mike. That side, yes. You, you, you guys make it way too more, much difficult. Seska <laughs> <laughs> says, I had smashing it in. Shay. Like this a bit? Uh, to be clear, this case is not coming on the market. Well, I can make a signature series out of it. <laughs> Control soft says, hot glue it. I think that would make okay, it Okay, I'm ready for it, Mike. Just doing like this. Let's see if it still closes. It will. And now he's gonna sit on it to make it close. No. <laughs> yeah, all good. It, you know, it has the. At a certain point, it was just <laughs> launch off. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel it wants to escape. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, it's actually, you know, yeah, all good. Uh, over here, it's like, like, like a bit. As long as you don't touch it. <laughs> no, 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 okay, no, 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 okay. no, without joking. I mean, I can, Alan, I can Alan says in Twitch chat, closed is closed. <laughs> yeah, no, I, okay, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm quite satisfied with but it. But now let's see if everything works properly, including all the RGB of all the fans. <sighs> okay, well, lucky, lucky me. Uh, okay. The Another only challenge. One you can skip on is the RGB of the Another CPU. challenge. Close this side. Will it close? All the cables. <laughs> Woohoo! That's easy. All, part. Uh, all the one cables. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, with this concept, let me see. Uh, with this concept, it's it's uh, easy to remove all the cables from the view over here. Oh, we can peel this off, Mike. Uh, Are we allowed idea. to do that? Yeah, sure. Whoa. Yep. Always nice, the peeling ASMR. Brand new. <laughs> I'm going to put it on Lucky. <laughs> ah, Mike is sitting here later, so. Ah, Lucky can sit next to me. Okay, uh, so, oh, I want to see. Where are you plugging in? Yeah. Um, so you don't see any cables over here? Uh, I see one cable, the VGA one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, wait, this could also be, no, well, it depends on the GPU. This could also be a nice hole to put the GPU cable in. Yeah, but this one is a very short PCB, so the connector is more in the middle. But indeed, if you have a higher end card where the PCB is longer than and that will be a nice place to put them. But, uh, okay, this one. Display port, LAN. This, I guess, is, is USB for our keyboard. Okay. Mike? Yeah, you're ready to power it on? <laughs> That's a great system, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> is the power supply switched on? Hey, Mike. Yeah, shit, it is. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, we cannot say that on live stream, right? So I think you have to remove the back again. That's easy. That's easy. Hey check, guys, check uh, the JFP uh, we one. We go to a commercial break. Thank you. Bye yeah. bye. That's actually a good suggestion. Try the reset switch because maybe you swap them. <sighs> maybe I swap what? The reset button and the power button. Can you press the reset button on the case? On top? Yeah, no, it also doesn't work. I always try. <laughs> I always <laughs> try that. Okay. <laughs> uh, is this power connected? Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay. Uh, I told you it would take another half an hour. We're already at 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, I see some lights, Eric. Y you don't want to know what I did. I'm very curious. I pulled out the power switch, the reset switch, and the two, so probably they were short circuiting, uh, the power uh, LEDs. <laughs> and I'm very curious at how you connected it. At I first. just pulled them out and it started working. Okay, interesting. Are all the fans working? <laughs> Rear one, yes. These two, yes. Front, yes. Yeah, everything. Top. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, top. <laughs> we only have one RGB, right? Yeah. And no, there is two in the CPU fan. But those are not RGB, right? No, they are. Uh, no, come on, Mike. Yes, they are. No. Yes, they are. Or well, they should be. Oh, no RGB. Too bad. One moment. <laughs> I'll be right back. Ah. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Sesco said, "Fully working, mostly system." <laughs> oh, I already see the problem. No, not really. Okay. <laughs> After my repair job, it still needs to close again? Yes. No. <laughs> I mean, these are coming from there. Maybe I hotwired them the wrong way. Okay, 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 okay. 
This is a bit of a nightmare, Mike. So it's, back to uh, the I, you JFP know, I, I put some tape on things. So you have the one missing pin in the JFP1. In the next two pins on that same row, you plug in the power switch. What? So you have one pin missing in your JFP1 connector, right? There's yeah. one empty one. Uh, you, what do you mean? On the main board? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. N on the first two pins next to that, in the same row as the missing pin, Yeah. there you connect the power switch. Uh, what power switch? <laughs> of the case. That, that's totally in the different side. The one I just pulled out. I'm now looking at RGB. Oh, you're now looking at RGB? I thought you were struggling with the JFP1. No, 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 no. I'm now looking at ah, to get okay. these to top fans. So either it's power, yeah. are they running? Can I put my finger in it? Is yeah, they the are running, I think. Yeah, they're running, so power is not the issue, so yeah. it's RGB. Mm -hmm. Where did they get that power from? <laughs> from the... From nowhere now. <laughs> what? <laughs> from nowhere at the moment, but... <laughs> no, but I mean they're running, so... They no, don't need power, right? No, you need power for the, the LEDs in there. Now yeah. you're only powering the fan itself, but not the LEDs. Who well, came up with this system? <laughs> but I connected them to, just I connected them to the hub. Hmm. Are they connected to the hub directly? Yeah. yeah. Are they in? Oh, now the the rear fan is also missing. Yeah, RGB. So it's quite strange that the rear fan is working, but those two. No, that one is not working anymore. No, I disconnected it. <laughs> okay. Now it should be working again. Ish moment. <laughs> yeah, mostly ish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what is this connector for? Okay. Can we not like uh, give me like a? Oh. Uh. Mm. I hate these RGB. Hello, hello, Deba Brata. Welcome, welcome. Are they now doing RGB? Skull no. says I predict smoke next. No, 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 I no. I think no, that's no. a safe bet. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the rear fan has RGB again. Okay, let me figure this out. Uh, Alan says, never realized RGB was hot swappable. Eric considers everything to be hot swappable. Oh. But yeah, RGB is okay. Okay, you know what my problem is, Mike? You remember? Eric says, imagine if Eric was doing the MSI pre-builds. You Oof. remember the no tape I put on everything, one. Mike? Sorry, Eric? You remember the tape I put on some connectors? Yes. Hmm. Was not a good solution? Well, it worked when it was... Uh, when it was still attached, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now I need to deattach it because I need to figure out how this... Uh, who came up with this stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe I have a better solution. So, one moment, one moment. Let me figure this out. So. Uh, While Eric continues to struggle with this, I'm going to pick another winner. Yeah. So if you mm. haven't participated yet in the giveaway, go to amazon.com uh, slash two slash okay. insider. If you're watching on Twitch or YouTube, you can also follow the direct link that our bot will put in the chat once every five minutes. And within Gleam, you can perform several actions. The more you perform, the bigger chance you have hey, to win. Mike. <laughs> yeah, it all works. It's all very flashy at the moment. You know, the, the, the strange thing is, I connected it to the same connector. Why is that strange? Well, now it works. Why is it flashing? Yeah, that was my question to you. Why is it flashing? Uh. <laughs> so maybe... That, uh, <laughs> that means not enough tape. <laughs> yeah. I have our next winner, Eric. Yeah. The honor is all yours. I will make it readable size for you. Uh, next one, Rosé H. Yeah, R-O-S-S-E space H. Rosé? Congrats. Yeah, congrats, Ross, Ross also with a loyalty bonus. Yes, you also won a Steam Wallet code. So oh, wow, my God, it works. Your mailbox, we'll email the code to you. Do you think if I push it. everything in this hall again? Yeah, and then probably the RGB switches also again. Yeah. Is it still <laughs> working on the front? So far, yes, but I cannot see the top fans. Mm. Oh, damn it. They stopped working. <laughs> How is it possible? I think we have a bad connector somewhere. I think we have a bad person installing <laughs> No, 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 serious. <laughs> serious. I need to put a... Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Neuropoga says gremlins in the system. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be old to understand that one. Although I saw some some uh, animation series about gremlins. Vectom is asking, does it work or do I still have a PC problem? Well, if Eric builds it, then you always have a PC problem. <laughs> no, Mike, come here. Yes. I want you to to show everybody. One moment, one moment, one moment, one moment, one moment, one moment. You think you can still fix it? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, uh, I just need to uh, clear my tape mess that you don't get the same <laughs> idea next time. <laughs> ah. So, one tip for me, if you attach tape really well, make sure yeah, you, you don't have to... You cannot get it off again. Yeah, okay, 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 that, that's correct. Okay, come here. So, I put this into this. Then it starts flashing until I bend it a bit. Mm -hmm. See, like this? Yes. But now it doesn't uh, run in the form. Okay, why are you using so few of the connectors on the hub? Because the hub is powered and now you're inter indefinitely interconnecting everything. So you're saying I should do like this? Yes, I would use way more connectors on the hub. So you're saying... It, that it one has a separate SATA power connector. It is a... Oh my god. You're saying it's a power issue. Could be. But still, it's flashing. Is that this one? This one. But why are these flashing if you're connecting another fan? Mike, 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 don't ask so many questions. Everything is connected here. So these are probably all interconnected to that single one? Uh, no, this is from... Uh, from, uh, <laughs> I don't know where it's from, Mike, don't, uh, this is from the, the LC, this is all from the LC. You made a huge mess here, hey, okay, hey, let me see, what did you If you here? touch it, you're going to close <laughs> it. Okay, so this one is connected directly, and this is going to the rear fan, right, because that's the mm -hmm, one working. Mm -hmm. Then you have these two. Yeah, all from the LC, all from the LC. I think the connector is damaged. Let me see. It works! No, one works. Oh. oh. So the other one that you already interconnected? Yeah. Uh, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> no, that no, 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 no. That's from the, the other fan. <laughs> okay. So let me see this one. Is not yet working. You look like Inspector Gadget. I feel like Inspector Gadget right now. Uh, so this is one of your taped connectors. And that's the one that's not working, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's working. No, I feel it's working. Yes, it is. Okay, okay, okay. Is it still working? <laughs> <laughs> no, if you touch it, then it's barely working. Okay, okay, okay. Right now it's working. So don't touch it anymore, close it. <laughs> Can you still close it? Is it still working? I, uh, that you have to... Be no, you oh switched it off again. <laughs> Is it working? No. Did it work? <laughs> this is uh, Eric's tape solution. You can see it works perfectly is fine. Is it working? No. If I were you, I would remove the tape and just plug it there in. There is no tape. You saw it. <laughs> is it yes, that one was definitely taped. <laughs> is it working already? <laughs> we can see it flashing a bit now. Oh, okay, okay. Can I, think, I, I think right now it is working, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Only thing what I'm doing... Nah, <laughs> it doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> and you also switched it off. Yeah, this is just a bad connector, Mike. No, I think it's a uh, bad tape. <laughs> There's no tape! Which one was it? This one? There's no tape, what is this? No, 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 no. Yeah, maybe it's that one. <laughs> Come on. So maybe there is tape. How can tape be... Uh, it's, it's, it's Let me quickly remove your tape. Oh, 
Oh, always fun, go. these kind of live streams. Oh, can that also happen? Like this? Of course. You have a hub for a reason, use it. Okay, now it's working. Now it's working. Is it still working? Yes. It's closed. Oh. Because now it's not interconnected with your tape solution anymore, but Ooh. it's actually connected to the RGB hub in the case. Wow. Which is there for a reason. <laughs> can you tilt it a bit? You have to pr prove to chat that it's actually working. Hey, I see some tape over here. <laughs> I, need to, I, I need to open I it up again because there's tape. tape. Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, where oh, that he comes opened from. it again. He opened it again. <laughs> okay, okay, now tilt it. Uh, so yeah. we can see that all the RGB works. Yes, perfect, Eric. Very pretty. And <laughs> it works as well over here. Nice. So a fully functional system. <laughs> <sighs> Who would have expected that? Hey, this was easy. Oh, it actually works. Yeah, <laughs> let me check the, the, the specs. Where do we have something? Let me also open it up in the bottom. Let me remove move that to the right a little bit. There we go. Did we build AMD system? Yeah, I remember because of the <laughs> liquid cooling. Yeah, so here you see it's actually still an old name. You may remember it, the DIY Ape. Um, but it's the, the Project Zero one. But it still has the old name there. Yeah. And the GPU 46Ti 8 gig. Yes, correct. So, it's easier to assemble on the front. No difference on the back. Is that a good summary? Um. I would say that the back becomes a bit more challenging. Well, not really. No, it's, no, no, uh, it's not more challenging. I mean, it's the same challenge as on the front. You need to connect everything in the right way. But the cables I, are longer. Because yeah. usually you would have to route them all around. Yeah. Now you have more spare cable, yeah. basically. And there is basically there is enough uh, space uh, to, to close it. It's just, I think we have some... Uh, Oh well, okay, let me be honest. I I put too many uh, uh, RGB cables on the same uh, cable. Yeah, you're Inter like... Interchanged. Yeah, you daisy chained everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this should be on the hub. Uh, that's yeah. my mistake. Uh, but yeah, there is enough room. Um, and the front looks really beautiful because you don't see any cable. Mike, can you show that? Yeah, this looks nice. Oh, like this. I no, like no, it. in the detailed cam. Maybe that's, uh, yeah. Oh, that looks intense with the green. <laughs> the yeah, with the key. green screen. So yeah, still the GPU uh, power cable is there, sometimes two, or maybe one in the future with the, the PCI Express one, and the tubes of the liquid cooler. I saw some really nice uh, solution uh, yeah, for the tubes. It. This was a case now model. Now you see the way it really looks. And the case model, he used the screw holes to put the water to the front. So the screw holes from the bracket. Oh, I see a very good point by NRT in the chat. Eric, the rear fan cable is visible. You okay, didn't next properly week. route that around. <laughs> the I rear see fan it. cable. In the top left, I can see it. Yeah, I already told you that, we, that would be an issue. <laughs> uh, you could have stuffed it in between. But okay, you, you have a pass on this one. It's, it looks okay. I can show I can you more. I can on show the, you more problems. Uh, if you keep the other side closed, then it's okay. <laughs> I see even somebody wants to buy it. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. He, he, if he Eric just built it, you're never sure if it lasts more result. than a week. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't see I was struggling with it, building it. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, um, oh, sorry, Mike. Yeah, this is nice. Still want to prove it works? Yeah, but you have to prove it with a game, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We have this new game, 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 game. Not sure if you guys know it. I should uh, put a headset on, but... Um, oh, yeah, Mike, yeah. Uh, maybe you can. it's called Battlebit. Uh, so as most of you will know, Eric is a huge Battlefield nerd. And this is, this is like Battlefield with, well... A bit downgraded graphics, but apparently gameplay is really good. So, Mike, I think you have sound. Let me check. Not yet. 
Ooh, friends playing. Yeah, I, I used to be a big Battlefield fan. Now it's more Call of Duty because Battlefield. Well, they made a lot of improvements. But this is called Battlebit Remastered. You can get it on Steam Early Access. I think it's like 15 euro slash US dollar or something. Uh, so quite cheap. Uh, the graphics are not really something that you're like. Uh, I need a 4090 for this. It's more like uh, I, I, you know, I don't know what you need to uh, to, to to run it on. Um, but this is about gameplay. Uh, it has really nice gameplay. <coughs> if you like Battlefield, uh, yeah. weapon handling is nice. Uh, you have uh, all kinds of uh, change teams. No, well. I fact, Thomas later. asking. I have a question. What processor does it have? It's a Ryzen 5 uh, 7600. Oh, long X. time. Uh, maybe I respawn. Eric, we don't have sound yet, by the way. Oh, um, well, this this game doesn't have a lot of sound. I put it on the capture card. I don't receive it on the capture card. Um, What's the audio level? It's high, fully open. I can well, I can play a YouTube movie, but then we get copyrighted material. We don't want that, right? Probably. Anyway, sound doesn't matter. I mean, sound I like the graphics. Uh, but you see, you can choose weapons. Didn't Let unlock a lot. Uh, attachments uh, on top of it. Secondary, uh, first aid. Uh, you can choose uh, different. Uh, how do you say that? Uh, gadgets. Well, gadgets maybe the wrong name, but personal mine, C4, clay mods if you unlock it. A secondary gadget and throwables like a grenade, a flashbang. Um, and I think we're going to start, so everybody walking, uh, deploy. See, graphics are like uh, a yeah, battle bit. It's like uh, pixels. Reminds me a bit about uh, the, the old games. I was talking with Peter about this. Uh, uh, Delta Force with the voxel engine. That's really long time ago. You could see it really far. But it's not using voxels, I would say. I didn't look into it. But yeah, graphics, as you can see, are not... a. Uh, um, and you can destroy uh, a lot of stuff. Not Alan sure. says Minecraft with guns. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A bit less square, but other than that. And this is about gameplay. So, um, just got a 650 plus headshot. You're lucky. <laughs> And still no smoke coming out of the system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's sniping. Oh, there's a Claymore over here. But I, I would say it's a friendly one because I, I survived. How does the Claymore know? Good point, Mike. <laughs> Good point. Oh, 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 oh. Um. Vectom says graphics a bit Minecraft. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, as Jabra says, how many players does this game support? One. It's large, right? Yeah. Oh. I want to show you the... Uh, it's 125 versus 125. Oh, that's a lot. I need to do my... Um, bandage. Ah, it doesn't matter. I yeah. think we actually have some audio now, weird enough. Yeah, 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 that's audio. So, I don't see any revives, so I'm just going to respawn again. Okay, guys, let us know how long. the audio levels are. So, you can spawn on teammates um, or on capture points. Where am I? <laughs> Monk and L says, funny how this game is more Battlefield than actual Battlefield. Yeah, they, they, I saw some videos on YouTube and they were saying they, uh, this game implemented a lot of features uh, which all the Battlefield fans are asking about uh, in the Battlefield 2042. So it has a nice uh, scoreboard. Hmm. The chat says still no game sound. I do see some sound at least coming from the <laughs> from Eric's system but I cannot hear yeah, it. Yeah sounds like sound is like graphics. Don't expect too much. Uh, 
L1K is saying, can you give a workshop on how to overclock your monitor? I, I would never recommend going over what your monitor is, uh, is rated for. Because usually they're already maxed out at what the panel can do. And it will only give you artifacts usually if you go beyond that. Um, but for example, if you have like a 165 hertz monitor, very often those are already like 144 hertz panels oh, pushed to 165. To and of course, the, those are tested and verified uh -oh. that they can do 165. Um, but I wouldn't go beyond the official uh, refresh rate of the monitor. So guys, are you still not hearing any in-game audio? Then I'm curious of what I I see the, the meter Ow. responding to. Well, don't oh, there is some audio, but it's extremely low. Okay, let me push this a bit higher. Let's see if that... That flag is captured. Yeah. Let me know if it's not too loud now. But again, uh, you need to unlock uh, attachments, unlock weapons, unlock gadgets. And it's still early access. It's called Battle Bit Remastered. I tried to find if there was like an earlier version, but there wasn't. So I don't know why the remastered is coming from. Maybe it's like a joke. Um, you have vehicles, like here there's a Jeep. Uh, is this one drivable? No. Should be. How do we enter? Is it not oh, E or This something? one is not drivable, it seems. Okay. Helicopters, tanks, uh, quad buggies. Is that what? a smoke grenade? Uh, that, yeah. Ah, nice. Oh, that's friendly. Yes, now they can hear audio. Good. <laughs> I love the way it looks if you climb that. <laughs> I see. Hey, Hello? you cut the rope. My goodness. Teammate. Anyway, system heard. works, right? Yeah. Good job. Still no smoke. Still all good. Well, only in the game. <laughs> because of the grenades. Um, the Bullet Brothers is asking, what all-in-one cooler does this PC have? And does it have an LCD display? Now, this model does not have an LCD display. It's the... MAG Core Liquid 240R White. Cheyenne Roy is asking, what game is this? Uh, Battle Bits it was called, right? Eric? I do I switch this on. I mean, it should uh, appear automatically, right? What should appear automatically? Overlay. What overlay? Afterburner the, from Ruud. Did you install it on this system? <laughs> yeah, I just, I just switch it on. But, oh, I don't know if this is... Uh, I don't know if this ins uh, installation has it. Yeah, I don't know if it's root version. I don't think so. Anyway, I want to see what kind of FPS I did. You're playing it through Steam. I think you can also switch on the Steam one. <coughs> it has a built-in FPS counter. Bandage. I need to get a sniper. This is a very good question, Eric. SJ Brass is asking, I'd love to know how the battle bit characters use the trigger with their square hand stumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe there's a 3D view uh, of a third person view of this. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's look at my teammates. 
he's doing something. Oh, he's re reviving with a medkit. And they uh, seem to have some fingers. Oh. Eric, a lot of people want to know your FPS. Okay, then we go to Steam. Yeah, you can use Steam or you can use GeForce Experience, you can use Game Bar apparently. Yeah, probably GeForce Experience not installed. A game Bar? Yeah, also I've never used it for it. But you can also use the Windows key G, I believe. Xbox Game Bar. Oh, that's not really performance. I've never used it for the oh, FPS. It's at the bottom. Oh. How do we get it back? I also never used it. I'm just going to use the Steam one. Where's the Steam one? Alan says you need to pin it. Oh, yeah, that's possible. Uh, and NRT says you need to give Game Bar rights to read the FPS. Well, here I... I yeah, there it has the pin icon. Pin. Oh, that's pin. Yep. Okay, FPS. Uh, <laughs> FPS, frames per second, yeah. You need to give it the rights. Just try it like this, maybe it already has. There is an update. And maybe drag it to a different location that I'm not blocking it. <laughs> ah, no, apparently it doesn't have access to the FPS now because it just shows nothing at the you moment. You guys are getting me killed. But how to get. That's why I just go to Steam. Sign in. You can update it. Oh my god. Yeah, probably it. Yeah, you see all the updates will be there. Okay, Steam. I hope Steam can do it without rebooting. Rebooting the game. Where is this in Steam? Settings. Now you need to go to your Steam settings. No, very left. Yes, settings. Uh, I think it's an inter... Oh yeah, yeah, this could be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In-game FPS counter. Top. Make, make it top right. Because it's, it's very <laughs> small, but at least you can see it. I'm bleeding. Let me make this a bit bigger. One second. Uh, 240. Oh my god! There we go. Oh, I have a horizontal recall. Uh, grenade? Oh. What, teammate? <laughs> Where is it? Oh, okay, it's warming. Boom. Okay guys, I'm gonna make the FPS a bit bigger. There we go. I need some weapon upgrade. The recoil is insane. Okay, I think we're losing. Are you locked on 240 FPS? Could be. I think you are. Makes sense. But yeah, this is, I mean, it's not the FPS killer this game. Uh, let's go to the, the settings. And now we have a double FPS. Now the game bar also shows it, actually. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, we have the resolution. You have V-Sync on. Mm, Switch that off. Yeah. Max FPS all the way. <laughs> Apply. Uh oh. One FPS. <laughs> what the? Looks <laughs> like more. 
Yeah, so it's not a very resource heavy And game. I'm running all, everything in Ultra. So. Potato. <laughs> <laughs> you can switch off the game bar, by the way. We have to. Uh, oh, this is a potato setting. We have to get switch off the game bar. Uh oh, what did I do? Uh, or I don't unpin know. it or whatever. Xbox game bar. Oh, click one time, switch it off. Where yeah, just it? unpin the thing. Yeah. Okay, so this is potato. One moment. Well, that looks potato. Yeah. Well, I mean, you still. It doesn't do much for the frame rate, so you're probably already being CPU bonus. Video, uh, Ultra. Shadows enabled. Number of lights. Oh yeah, everything is maxed out. Motion blur. Hey, uh, they, they, they switch it off by default. Smart good. people. Keep it off. <laughs> I don't see any difference between potato and uh, Ultra. No. You're running into CPU bottleneck. It's not the VGA is not bottlenecking. Are we sure it's on um, on uh, Ultra? Yeah, it is. I think it is. Yeah. Oh, uh, where is it? Max FPS. Yeah, it was already there. So you don't need an extremely fast PC for this. No. Nope. <laughs> anyway, probably there are some benchmarks online from some websites you can or YouTube channels. Oh my God, where did I land? 140. That's all too far. What are all the are the blue dots all your teammates? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not sure <laughs> if you can switch teammates. it off, but I mean, oh. Anarchy says resolution is 1080p. You could raise that. Yeah, you're using a 440p monitor. Right? Pop, 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 uh, video. Yes. Th this one. Yep. Oh. Wow. I'm still dead. <laughs> In 4040p, I'm also dead. <laughs> I'm playing without audio, guys. Hey, why can I not move here? It's a bad excuse. <laughs> oh, I have to make this a little bit bigger. One moment, the frame rate is higher. There we go. Still not a big difference in frame rate. So you're still CPU bottleneck. Yeah, probably CPU indeed. I love the, the graphics of the explosion of the grenade. <laughs> Doesn't do damage to the car. Skeet says cleaner look. Yes, the higher resolution definitely helps. Yeah. Sniper. Parachute? Nope. Oh, that hurt. What? He gotcha. Yeah. Anyway, I think, Mike, that's it for today. Yes. Why can I not spawn here? Indestructible car, yeah, indeed. So I hope you uh, enjoyed it, everyone, to see yeah, Eric struggle like with building this. You especially liked the RGB, didn't you, Eric? But yeah. I think the end result is really nice. Like, if, if you don't open the other side panel, that looks very pretty. Ah. Well, no, RGB I, also, is working I also think the Project Zero has future. I mean, it's it's a cleaner look, uh, more easy to access, to build. Yeah. Um, you just need to find a solution for the RGB. <laughs> <laughs> or for the cables, for that matter. Uh, so we will launch this later this year. Um, yep. Probably by that time we will do another live stream because this this case is just the internal. All still engineering samples. Oh yeah, yeah everything. Yeah. The main board, the case. Uh, so just to give you an early sneak peek of what we're working on. Yeah. And also to get your feedback on uh, this. Yeah. Next week, Mike. It's not going to be the combination of us two again. I think what it's been, we've been doing the live stream oh, like three I'm weeks in a row. You. But next week, Ralph will be back. Yeah. And he will do a monitor live stream with a very nice um, 
good value 1440p 170 hertz monitor um, I'm not sure who will do it with Ralph the live stream maybe you maybe yeah maybe me if people are not tired of us yet maybe Peter maybe Peter could be as well so I hope you guys enjoyed today next week uh, we will be there again same um, uh, place same time so uh, make sure to join again let's maybe pick one more winner for today before we close it off why a white PC? Because we don't have a black case. Correct. I just shit my pants. <laughs> and our last winner. Last winner is... Uh, oh, Mike. Um, I'll make it bigger for you. One second. No, no, no. I can read it. It's just I cannot pronounce it. Breaked Twin? Congratulations, Breaked Twin. Today, yep. all with loyalty bonus. Thank you, guys. Appreciate yes. it. And thank you all for your feedback. Um, has some development to do, so we appreciate your uh, ideas. Like maybe put the connectors on the other side of the main box. <laughs> <laughs> Very good suggestion. <laughs> Winner. Thank Th you all. Yes, thank you for joining. Have a nice week, have and a nice day, have a nice evening. See or you next morning, week. wherever you are. Goodbye. See you next week. Bye bye. <laughs>